गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग ओके गाइस इज माय ऑडियो क्लियर Okay, all clear. That's good. Right. Okay. So, guys, we will be we will be starting with this session of anesthesia, in which we'll be doing the rapid review of the series. Okay. Uh, I think you guys might be knowing me. My name is Dr. Wajid Khan. I might have taught you right either in your university or uh, at the other centers. So anyways guys we will be discussing with the topic of anesthesia so guys are you familiar with this topic of anesthesia yes come on waiting for your answers yes so some of you most of you are familiar okay so we will be starting a rapid review session guys okay for some of you some bot okay okay so anyways guys we'll start with the session of anesthesia we'll start with the history of anesthesia in the history of anesthesia the points that are usually asked basically guys we will be focusing on the main points that could be tested or that could be asked in your exam okay okay some of you are telling not in depth not that much okay if you have if you are not familiar that that's also to that's also fine okay So anyways guys well uh, in this topic of anesthesia first we'll be dealing with the history in the history they have been asking some mcqs regarding who's the father of anesthesia come on guys you must be knowing who's the father of anesthesia write in the chat box who's the father of anesthesia john john what father of anesthesia is very good remember guys john snow john snow is regarded as a father of anesthesia father of anesthesia okay but remember they have been asking you about the modern who is the father of modern anesthesia the father of anesthesia is john snow the father of modern anesthesia the father of modern anesthesia is w t g morton w t g morton have you heard about him w t g morton w t g morton you can see in the slide guys why morton is regarded as the father of modern anesthesia just see, see in the slide you can see this picture one guy is being basically there is a surgery of this person this patient going on over here one guy is delivering anesthesia the other guy is doing surgery remember this guy who is delivering anesthesia this guy is called as father of modern anesthesia why is he called as father of modern anesthesia as you can see the picture and you can depict what you can depict guys just look over here he is performing he is basically giving ether to the patient in front of whole audience the audience is seeing okay so this is the guy called as morton who did the first public demonstration of ether anesthesia on what day 16th october 1846 so remember due to the successful demonstration of ether anesthesia modern is regarded as a father of modern anesthesia father of modern anesthesia remember guys morton modern morton modern okay so father of modern anesthesia is w t g morton w t g morton is regarded as a father of modern anesthesia why because he gave the first successful demonstration of ether anesthesia on what day on 16th october 1846 that's why this day is also celebrated as what this day is also celebrated as world anesthesia day world anesthesia day is this thing clear guys we have just started with the history of anesthesia the father of anesthesia is john snow but the father of modern anesthesia is whom guys wtg morton wtg morton why because he gave the first public demonstration of what anesthesia first public demonstration of ether anesthesia on what day 
16th October 1846. That's why it is celebrated as World Anesthesia Day. Right? Next, father of spinal anesthesia. There have been questions coming on father of spinal anesthesia. Spinal anesthesia. Come on, guys. Spinal anesthesia. First of all, guys, do you know what is spinal anesthesia? Those who are new to this anesthesia topic, just a brief thing. Guys, remember in anesthesia, we are having local anesthesia, we are having general anesthesia, we are having spinal, we are having epidural and we are having nerve blocks. Nerve blocks. Guys, just tell me which form of anesthesia technique, technique requires the patient to be in unconscious state or makes the patient unconscious. Which anesthesia? In which anesthesia the patient is unconscious? In which anesthesia technique the patient is unconscious? Come on, guys. Very good. Very good. It is general anesthesia. In general anesthesia, the patient is unconscious. Patient is unconscious. When do you give spinal anesthesia, guys? Just listen over here. Spinal anesthesia is given for the patients who undergo surgery below the level of umbilicus for a short duration. For a short duration. Short duration means what? 2 to 3 hours surgery. Any surgery which is done below the level of umbilicus for 2 to 3 hours of duration, you require to give what? Spinal anesthesia. Spinal anesthesia. Right? Apart from spinal anesthesia, Yes, yes, yes. Right. Apart from spinal anesthesia, epidural anesthesia is also there. Come on guys, what is epidural anesthesia given for? Epidural anesthesia is given for what? Epidural is also having, remember there are two to three indications of epidural. The main indication of epidural is what? It is also given for the surgeries done below the level of umbilicus but for a longer duration but for a long duration, right? Apart from that, epidural can also be given for pain relieving purpose. Pain relieving purpose, okay? So anyways, we are, we are just discussing a brief thing about anesthesia techniques. Brief thing about anesthesia techniques. Remember, there is general anesthesia where you make the patient totally unconscious. Knock off the patient. Second is what? Spinal. Spinal anesthesia is given for what surgeries? Surgeries which are done below the level of umbilicus for 2 to 3 hours of duration. Then there is epidural anesthesia. Epidural anesthesia is given for what surgeries? Surgeries which are done below the level of umbilicus for a long duration. Okay? Epidural. After epidural, what is the next anesthesia technique? Local anesthesia. What is meant by local anesthesia, guys? Local anesthesia. Local anesthesia means it works on the surfaces. It works on the surfaces or the mucous membranes, right? Surfaces or the mucous membrane. That is local anesthesia. Local anesthesia. Okay. So these are the few anesthesia techniques that we need to remember. And we also need to remember the history. In the history, we have we know who is the father of anesthesia and father of modern anesthesia. Next, we were discussing about the father of spinal anesthesia. The father of spinal anesthesia is August Bear. August Bear is regarded as the father of Spinal anesthesia. So remember, guys, the father of modern anesthesia, whenever whenever this MCU comes, modern answer should be modern. Modern. Okay. So this is regarding the history of anesthesia. Guys. History of anesthesia. Now you are familiar with some techniques. Local is there, spinal is there, epidural is there, general is there. But before giving anesthesia to the, any person, you first Check the person whether he is fit to undergo anesthesia or not, right? For that checking, what is the checkup called as guys? Before giving anesthesia to the patient, you check whether he is fit to undergo anesthesia or not. What is that checkup called as? That checkup is called as pre-anesthetic checkup. That checkup is called as pre-anesthetic checkup. So guys, remember we are discussing about the anesthesia and the anesthesia related techniques in which we are discussing about the pre-anesthetic checkup or pre-anesthetic evaluation, okay? So, for those who are new to this topic of anesthesia, I'll be just telling you the gunshot points that could come in the exam, okay? So, in the pre-anesthetic checkup, what we do? Imagine I am the anesthetist and here a patient comes to me for a pre-anesthetic checkup. First of all, pre-anesthetic checkup means what? 
the checkup done before giving anesthesia so when he comes to me what i tell what i tell him is basically in the pac i have to focus on three things first is the airway assessment second is what guys after airway assessment second is what first is the airway assessment next is what hemoglobin estimation third is what the fasting status fasting status so first is what guys first is the airway assessment airway assessment so how how should how should you uh, like uh, how should you do the airway assessment so this patient comes to my clinic i have to do the airway assessment for airway assessment i will tell the patient only two things what two things i need to tell to this patient i will tell this patient bhai saab please open your mouth second thing what i need to tell is lift his chin two things for airway assessment open mouth lift chin okay when i am telling him to open mouth i am basically seeing the structures in his oral cavity the structures that i i can easily see in his oral cavity okay so if i can see the structures clearly structures means what honge kya bhai oral cavity mein hard palate hoga soft palate hoga uvula hoga right tonsillar pillars right if i can see all the structures clearly that means he is having an adequate airway so that i can intubate him easily right so this airway assessment remember guys we are discussing about the pre anesthetic checkup in the pre anesthetic checkup we are discussing about what we are discussing about the airway assessment when i tell the patient to open his mouth what what what's the first thing remember when he is opening his mouth i am looking for two things remember first is the structures the structures which i see in his oral cavity is being classified by a guy called as mallam patti and that classification is called as mallam patti classification that is very 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 important guys mallam patti classification so when he opens his mouth i look for mallam patti classification and second is what i look for the interincisor distance interincisor distance just look over here guys when i tell, when a patient comes to my clinic right i tell the patient to first open his mouth open mouth apart from opening mouth i tell the patient to lift his chin lift his chin as the patient is opening his mouth i am looking for two things one is the mallam patti classification other is the interincisor distance what is interincisor just look over here the distance between the upper and lower incisor this is the iid interincisor distance so anyways when he is opening mouth first is the mallam patti mallam patti classification is what it is basically the classification given on the structures that are visible so imagine there are four patients coming to my clinic patient 1 patient 2 3 and 4 the first patient comes to my clinic he opens his mouth okay and i am able to see the hard palate soft palate when i tell him to open mouth i am able to see the hard palate soft palate uvula tip of uvula and tonsillar pillars tip of uvula and tonsillar pillars then it is called as mallam patti class 1 there are four classes guys the first patient mallam patti class 1 what is mallam patti class 1 when patient opens his mouth you are able to see what what all things when the patient opens his mouth you are able to see the hard palate soft palate uvula tip of uvula and tonsillar pillars tip of uvula and tonsillar pillars that is mallam patti class 1 mallam patti class 1 and there is mallam patti class 2 what is mallam patti class 2 what is mallam patti class 2 when the patient when a patient comes to my clinic when i tell him to open his mouth the second patient he is opening mouth i am able to see the hard palate i am able to see the soft palate i am able to see the uvula but the tip is not seen just look over here this patient is the tip seen no only hard palate soft palate uvula is seen but the tip is not seen this is mallam patti class 2 this is mallam patti class 2 class 3 is what third patient comes to my clinic i tell him to open mouth i am able to only see the hard and soft palate only the hp and sp what is hp hard palate what is sp soft palate only hard and soft palate visible that is mallam patti class 3 mallam patti class 3 last is what guys last is what class 4 class 4 means what this patient comes to my clinic he opens his mouth and when he opens his mouth i am able to see only the hard palate only hard palate this is class 4 now look at this diagram and say 
like just tell me which is the case of easy intubation and which patient is the case of difficult airway. Easy airway कौन सा है और difficult airway कौन सा है? Come on guys. Which is the which is the case of easy airway and which is the case of difficult airway? Come on guys, class one you can see there is lot of space for us to put the tube, whereas class four there is no space. So with the diagram you can get it. Class one is a case of easy intubation. Class four is a case of difficult intubation. Malam patti four is a case of difficult intubation. So remember guys, three and four both are difficult. One and two both are regarded as easy. There is one more class, guys. Class zero. Malam patti class zero. What is malam patti class zero? When this patient opens his mouth, you are able to see the hard palate, soft palate, uvula, tip of uvula, and tip of epiglottis. Tip of epiglottis. Okay. So there is one more class called as malam patti class zero. Malam patti class zero. Malam patti class zero means what, guys? Come on. Malampati class 0 is, just look over here, Malampati, Malampati 0 is what? Hard palate, I am just writing the short forms guys, hard palate, SP soft palate, uvula, tip of uvula, tonsillar pillars, plus tip of epiglottis, tip of epi glottis tip of epiglottis right that is class 0 class 1 is what hard palate soft palate uvula with tip and tonsillar pillars tp is tonsillar pillars yeah good evening good evening okay class 2 is hard palate soft palate uvula is visible but tip is not. But tip is not. Okay. Class 3, hard palate and soft palate visible. Guys, these are very, very important. Malampati is very important. Class 4 is only hard palate visible. Only hard palate visible. Okay. Only hard palate visible. So this is regarding what guys, this is regarding the Malampati classification. There have been many questions coming on the Malampati classification, right? I hope everyone is clear. Haan bhai, uvula, uvula hai pura structure hota hai, Theek hai? Uvula, tip, remember in class 2, hard palate, soft palate, uvula is visible, but the tip is inside, no, the tip is not visible in class 2, okay? दोनों अलग नहीं है दोनों एक ही स्ट्रक्चर है एक ही स्ट्रक्चर के एक एक नीचे का पार्ट होता है एक ऊपर का पार्ट ओके नेक्स्ट दिस इज रिगार्डिंग द मल्लमबडी क्लास ओके सो गाइस इन द एयरवे असेसमेंट यू टेल द पेशेंट टू ओपन माउथ एंड यू आर लुकिंग फॉर मल्लमबडी क्लासिफिकेशन आई होप एवरीवन इज क्लियर विद द मल्लमबडी नेक्स्ट आफ्टर मल्लमबडी क्लास ही स्टिल ओपनिंग हिज माउथ ही स्टिल होल्डिंग हिज माउथ लाइक इन अ ओपन फैशन सो यू हैव डन द मल्लमबडी व्हाट्स द नेक्स्ट थिंग दैट वी नीड टू लुक फॉर when he is opening mouth, you look for two things. One is the malam patti, other is what? Other is what? Other is what? Come on, inter incisor distance. Inter incisor distance. Class 4 wale patients breathe kaisa karenge? Are bhai breathe karenge? So, sans lene ke liye jaga hogi. Structures you are not able to see. They will be able to breathe. Thodi si space hogi sans lene ke liye. Okay. Unko intubate karne ke liye mushkil hoga. To intubate them, it will be difficult. Okay. Next. So, so remember, guys, when I tell the patient to open his mouth, I am looking for the Malampati class. And second thing that I look for is what? IID. What is IID? Inter incisor distance. The normal inter incisor distance should be 4 to 5 centimeters. The normal inter incisor distance should be how much, guys? 4 to 5 centimeters. If it is less than 4 centimeters, if it is less than 4 centimeters, then it is a case of difficult airway. Then it is a case of difficult airway. Okay. So, normal inter incisor distance and less than 4 centimeters is a case of difficult airway. Okay. 
so we have done the airway assessment by doing the by telling the patient to open mouth next yeah tracheostomy can be possible if at all the patient mouth opening is restricted and all and you cannot put the tube orally then you can put the tube through the trachea that is the cut open the trachea and directly put the tube inside that is called as tracheostomy so anyways mallampatti is done iid is done so in airway assessment i tell the patient to open mouth when he is opening mouth mallampatti and iid second thing i i need to tell the patient is lift your chin lift your chin when the patient lifts his chin you look for two distances what two distances i need to talk about the distance between the thyroid cartilage and the mentum which is called as what thyromental distance thyromental distance and one more distance we need to look which is called as what the distance between the sternal notch and the mentum which is called as sternomental distance right so two distances the thyromental and the sternomental distance the normal thyromental distance should be how much guys normal thyromental distance should be more than 6.5 cm more than 6.5 cm right remember guys this is the thyromental distance the normal thyromental distance should be how much normal tm distance is how much guys i when it's less so we have to go when it's less we have to go for laryngoscopy no I, i'll i'll come to it okay normal thyromental distance should be how much guys it should be more than 6.5 cm 6.5 cm next i told you after thyromental distance there is one more distance just look over here the distance between the mentum and the sternal notch mentum and the sternal notch this distance is called as sternomental distance sternomental distance the normal sternomental distance should be the normal STM is sternomental distance should be how much guys the normal sternomental distance should be more than 12.5 cm more than 12.5 cm okay more than 12.5 cm is it clear right so someone was asking me if at all the interincisa distance is below what we need to do remember guys the normal interincisa distance should be 4 cm ठीक है, this should be the mouth opening. If at all some are, some of the patients who are good cut chewers, who are tobacco chewers, right? Usually we see some people like chewing tobacco and all. For those persons, what happens is they will get submucous fibrosis. Submucous fibrosis की वजह से their mouth opening will be restricted. They won't be able to open their mouth. In those patients, if you cannot if they are not having a mouth opening regular or adequate you cannot put laryngoscope also in those patient if you want to intubate the best way is to open the trachea directly and introduce the tube that is why that's the that's called as tracheostomy tracheostomy okay so remember guys in the airway assessment we tell the patient two things what two things we need to tell the patient open mouth and lift chin when the patient opens his mouth we are looking for two things inter uh, mallampatti classification and inter incisor distance inter incisor distance when the patient is lifting his chin we look for what we look for two distances what two distances the thyromental distance and the sternomental distance thyromental and the sternomental distance okay now regarding next so remember in the pre anesthetic checkup the main thing of the pac is what airway assessment if you don't do an airway assessment in the pac your pac is based okay after airway assessment the second thing that you look in the pac is what guys in the pac you look for the history history now guys regarding the history don't take the social history and all the history that is very important is what history of diseases ab india mein kaun se diseases common hai bp common hai sugar common hai agar bp and sugar both the patient is having bp and sugar then he will get what he will get heart attack or heart disease also so these are the common ones so we need to focus on the common ones and remember what should be given and what not should be given so remember guys in the history you need to ask the patient are you suffering with hypertension we'll first take an example of hypertension so i told you in history the diseases that are common that that we need to ask example hypertension yes it is common so i'll ask about hypertension apart from hypertension come on 
coronary artery disease the patient might be having coronary artery disease so i need to take history of coronary artery disease okay apart from that if the patient is taking some depressant antidepressants and all you need to take the history so remember guys you need to first ask the patient are you suffering with hypertension the patient will tell that doctor yes i suffer from hypertension hypertension is not a problem for anesthesia you know what is the problem the medication that he is taking for hypertension diabetes diabetes itself it's not a problem for anesthesia and all but the medication that is taking for diabetes that will be a problem so basically you are taking the history so that you need to ask about the medications so remember guys hypertension ke liye apan kya advise karenge puchhenge patient se bhai aapko bp hai kya if the patient tells yes doctor i am having hypertension advise him softly say what take all anti hypertensive medications except two medications that needs to be stopped on the day of surgery what two medications guys what two medications need to be stopped ace inhibitors and ARBs ace inhibitors and ace inhibitors and ARBs you have to stop on the day of surgery on the day of surgery right to stop ace inhibitors and ARBs on the day of surgery why are you stopping ace inhibitors and arbs why because if the patient takes ace inhibitors and arb then there are many chances that he might land up into rebound hypotension during surgery he might go into profound hypotension okay so remember ace inhibitors and arbs needs to be stopped next if the patient is taking anti psychotic medication or anti epileptic or anti depressants or if the patient is taking any thyroid medications thyroid medications what is the what is your advice guys regarding it you need to tell him you can continue you can continue there is no problem with your medicines there is no problem with your medicines okay hypertension ke liye kya bolenge stop ace inhibitors and arbs on the day of surgery okay if the person is suffering with cad coronary artery disease coronary artery disease come on guys think and answer coronary artery disease wala banda he will be taking mostly the drugs that are liquefying his blood why because he had coronary artery disease due to a thrombus so he will be on blood thinners so what medication history we need to take we need to take the history of the medication that he is taking theek hai wo log lega kya bhai aspirin clopidogrel anticoagulants theek hai so if the patient is taking aspirin if the patient is taking aspirin you need to tell him to continue it continue it okay continue aspirin aspirin in a dose of 75 mg does no harm 75 mg dose mein you can continue if you are giving aspirin in a therapeutic dose that is 325 then it needs to be stopped and all but you need to just remember the common ones okay aspirin should be continued why because 75 mg is a baby aspirin dose that can be easily continued okay next clopidogrel If the patient is on clopidogrel, what's your advice? You need to tell him to stop clopidogrel. Now he will he will ask the patient will ask you when should I stop, doctor? Your answer should be stop it at least one week or eight days before surgery. One week or eight days before surgery. Before surgery, SX is surgery. Okay, so clopidogrel needs to be stopped eight one week before surgery. Next. If the patient is on low molecular weight aspirin, stop it 12 hours before surgery. 12 hours before surgery. If the patient is taking some anticoagulants such as warfarin, what's your answer, guys? For warfarin, it should be stopped three to five days before surgery. Three to five days before surgery, you need to stop it. So basically, remember, guys, clopidogrel you are stopping. These are the remember there are many other drugs, but these are the most important one. Aspirin. can be continued clopidogrel needs to be stopped 8 days before surgery low molecular weight heparin should be stopped 12 hours before surgery warfarin needs to be stopped how many days guys warfarin warfarin ko rokhenge hum 3 se 5 din before surgery before surgery right there are there are other other drugs also but these are the important ones that i am discussing okay now guys after the history next we need to know about the fasting status fasting status of the patient now guys regarding the fasting status why is the fasting status playing an important role guys 
Why does the fasting state play an important role? Why can't I, why can't I take the patient if the patient just had his lunch? Why can't it? Why can't I take him for surgery? Why am I telling the patient that my he say eight hours till the food is not Come on, guys. Why am I telling the patient not to eat? Very good. Why? Because if patient has full stomach, then during surgery, what will happen? The stomach will come from the stomach. Esophagus said it will go into the trachea. The patient will aspirate. In order to prevent that aspiration, we are telling the patient to be in a fasting state. Fasting state. So, how many hours of fasting is mandatory for an adult? How many adult ke liye kitne hours of fasting? 6 to 8 hours. Who is on solid food? An adult will be on solid food. Solid food could be chicken, paneer, it could be anything. Okay? So, Person should be in a fasting state for how many hours? 6 to 8 hours. Adult who is on solid food, 6 to 8 hours. Bacho mein kaisa hai? In children, in children, if the child is on formula milk, if the child is on formula milk, we follow this formula called as 642. Formula milk. If the child is on formula milk, 6 hours of fasting is needed. If the child is on mother's milk, how many hours of fasting is needed, guys? Four hours of fasting. If the child is on clear fluid, how many hours of fasting is needed? Two hours. Six, four, two. Six, four, two is the rule that we follow. Six, four, two. Okay. So remember, guys, if the if the child is on what milk? Mother, formula milk, six hours. Mother's milk, four hours. And clear fluid, two hours. So remember, these are very, very important. How many hours of fasting is needed? 642 is the formula that we go for children. Whereas in adults, how many hours of fasting is needed? Adult who is on solid food, how many hours of fasting? 6 to 8 hours. 6 to 8 hours. Okay. Next, after knowing, remember guys, we are still in the pre anesthetic checkup. In the pre anesthetic checkup, I have done the airway assessment. Next, after the airway assessment, I have taken the history of the patient. Next is the fasting status. Fasting status. After taking the fasting status, after taking the history and airway assessment, now I will give a certificate to the patient. Certificate means, I will give a certificate to the patient. Ke hath mein, okay? You will write something. Okay? That, is, that itself is a certification that you are fit to undergo anesthesia or not. What is that certification called as? That certification is called as ASA certification. That is called as what guys? ASA certification. ASA full form kya hai? American Society of Anesthetists or American Society of Anesthesiologists. Okay? So remember guys, just look over here. We are discussing about what? We are discussing about the ASA certification. So after taking the history and all, you give a certificate to the patient, tell that you are fit to undergo anesthesia, right? So this ASA certification, this certification, ab ye certificate kis basis pe doge? What basis? Based upon the systemic illness, systemic illness. If the patient does not have any systemic illness, systemic illness means what? Diabetes, systemic illness, hypertension, systemic illness, heart disease, systemic illness. Yes or no? So remember, if the patient does not have any of these things, and again, any person who is free from systemic illness, he comes under ASA 1. ASA 1. So remember guys, ASA classification. ASA classification, there are 6 classes. 1, 2, class 3, 4, 5 and 6. So class 1, what is ASA class 1? What is ASA class 1? Any patient who is free from systemic illness. Patient free from, what illness guys? Patient free from systemic illness. He comes under ASA 1. ASA 1. What is ASA 2? ASA 2 means what? Abhi mein aapko example dunga taakhi aapko yaad rahe. ASA 2 means what? A patient comes to your clinic. You are asking him, Bhai sahab, are you suffering with any disease? He is telling, yes doctor, I am suffering with diabetes. When, once he is telling that he is suffering with diabetes, you check his blood sugar level. His fasting blood sugar level was 100. His post lunch blood sugar level was 120. Fasting 100 hai, post lunch 120 hai. Controlled hai ya nahi hai. 
Come on, guys, write in your chat box. Is it control or not? Control hai nahi hai bhai. Hmm? Come on, I'm not getting your answers. Yes, it is control. Yes. Fasting, okay, it's right, Fasting, it should be like less than 100, but it's 100. How much is it in post-lunch? 120, that's also, see, there are two controls. That means, patient having diabetes, which is under control, is class 2. That means, patient having systemic illness, which is well under control, which is well under control, under control. That is called as ASA2. ASA2. Systemic illness well under control is ASA2. Next is ASA3. ASA3 is what, guys? Patient having systemic illness. Patient having systemic illness which is not under control. Which is not under control. Example, not under control means what, guys? Ek banda aega, he will be telling the doctor, I am having diabetes. Fasting blood sugar level of this patient is 190. Post lunch is 350. It is not under control. Yes or no? So, any person who is having a systemic disease which is not under control or which is coming with some functional limitation, it is class 3. Functional limitation with some problem that is class 3. Okay? Then there is class 4. ASA class 4. ASA class 4 means what? Patient having a disease which is a threat to his life. Patient having a systemic illness which is constant threat to his life. Constant threat to his life. Right? Very good. Very good, Divya. Okay? Constant threat to his life. Constant threat to his life means what? Example, this patient had a recent MI. MI means yani myocardial infarction. Infarction. Okay? Patient tells, uh, comes to your clinic and tells the doctor, two months back I had an MI. That MI can pose threat to his life now during surgery. If now he's posted for some other surgery. So, any recent MI that could be termed under class 4. Class 4. Right? Next. ASA class 5. Class 5 means what? Moribund patient. Moribund patient. Moribund patient. Moribund patient means what? Come on guys, what is moribund patient? Patient suffering with multiple comorbidities without surgery. Uska survival chance to hai hi nahi. Surgery ke bagar to mar hi jayega. Multiple comorbidities. He is suffering with diabetes, hypertension, coronary artery disease. He is having CVA, stroke also, right? So, any moribund patient whose survival chances are very less, that patient is class 5. What is class 6, guys? ASA 6 is what? Brain dead patient. Brain dead patient. Brain dead patient is ASA 6. Brain dead patient is ASA 6. Now, you must be wondering why we do surgery in a brain dead patient. In brain dead patient, we have to harvest organ from them. So, brain dead patient. These are the six categories, guys. These are the six categories. Again, a road traffic accident victim, a road traffic accident patient. If at all, a road traffic accident patient is there who is having some comorbidities and all, he will be coming, he will be coming, he will be classified according to the comorbidity. But a road traffic accident patient who is not at all responding, who is having an intracranial bleed, he might be having some comorbidities, means he will be termed under ASA class 5. Okay. Basically, remember guys, ASA is given for what? ASA is basically totally depending on what? ASA, American society is totally depending upon the systemic illness the patient is suffering with. Okay. Systemic illness the patient suffers with. Is this thing clear guys? Yes or no? This is regarding what? This is regarding the ASA classification. This is regarding the ASA classification. Now, guys, just look over here. Look over here. To this class, you can add a suffix E. You can add a suffix E. If it is an emergency surgery, you add a suffix E. Okay? E can be added. Imagine a patient is there who is coming to your clinic and telling that doctor, 
The patient is posted for tonsillectomy surgery. Patient is posted for tonsillectomy surgery. She comes to your clinic. You are asking her. Aapko diabetes hai. She is telling no. Aapko hypertension hai. She is telling no. She is not having any comorbidities. Any person free from comorbidities comes under which category guys? Which category of ASA? Which category of ASA? ASA 1. Very good. ASA 1. But is tonsillectomy an emergency? No. So tonsillectomy is not an emergency. So we'll just write what? We'll just write class 1. Class 1. Now, if some in the other scenario, I gave you this, this scene. A patient is there who comes to your clinic for ruptured ectopic pregnancy management. Okay, ruptured ectopic pregnancy management. Ruptured ectopic pregnancy management means what, guys? Ruptured ectopic. She's, uh, you are asking the patient about the history. You are asking, are you suffering with diabetes? Are you suffering with hypertension? Patient is telling, no doctor, I don't suffer from diabetes. I don't suffer from hypertension. Okay? So, she will be under one only. But as it is a ruptured ectopic pregnancy, will be just, uh, will, will just classify at 1 or 1E. One e. We will classify as 1E. Guys, remember, ruptured ectopic is not a systemic illness. Not a systemic illness. Okay? So, we have to remember it's 1E. Ruptured ectopic pregnancy without comorbidities, it is 1E. Is this thing clear, guys? Yes or no? Okay? Is the pre-anesthetic checkup clear? In the pre-anesthetic -pre checkup, I told, I told the patient to open mouth and lift his chin. Is this thing clear? Come on, Divya, Yasir, Vidyashri, Alaf, Prithvi. Sure, right. So, we'll proceed further, guys. We'll proceed further. We'll proceed towards what? Anesthesia is now divided, guys. Remember, I told you we'll divide this topic of anesthesia into general anesthesia, regional and local anesthesia. General, regional, local anesthesia. First, starting with the general anesthesia. General anesthesia. So remember guys, in general anesthesia, in general anesthesia, what we need to know is how you would make the patient unconscious. Remember guys, remember, in general anesthesia, are you giving a single drug or, or are you using a combination of drugs and giving it to the patient so that the patient becomes, un, so that the patient is unconscious and maintain unconscious. In general anesthesia, we are not at all dependent on a single drug. We use a combination. We use an IV agent. We also give inhalational agent. All agents are having their own responsibilities. All agents are having their own responsibilities. Okay? So, general anesthesia, we are basically mixing some drugs. We are giving a combination of drugs. That's why this general anesthesia is, technique is called as Balanced anesthesia technique. It is also called as what, guys? Balanced anesthesia technique. And this balanced anesthesia was introduced by by a guy called as John Lundy. John Lundy. Even though it's a funny name, but we have to remember. So, why do you call general anesthesia as a balanced anesthesia? Why? Because aap ek drug pe depend nahi kar rahe ho. you are using many drugs in combination and giving in a titrated manner that is called as what anesthesia balanced anesthesia Subquare doses balance karke you are giving that's called as balanced anesthesia okay so remember guys we are talking about this general anesthesia now in this general anesthesia what we need to know is agar koi bande ko behosh karna hai if you want to make a person unconscious the person remember guys if you want remember general anesthesia means you make the person unconscious you maintain him in the unconscious state and then you reverse him back. Is it clear? So remember guys, in general anesthesia, there are four phases. General anesthesia, char phase mein denge. First phase, remember guys, uh, most of you guys, most of you guys, all of you, all of you guys have, might, uh, like, uh, might have traveled through the aeroplane and all, right? While going to the university or while coming back to the home and all. So whenever you sit into the flight, whenever you sit into the flight, the flight has four phases. Plane mein baith rahe ho, plane ke char phases honge. Kaun sa first phase hoga? Jab aap flight mein baith hoge, when, when, once you sit on the flight, there will be, the flight will be doing some time pass, yes or no? It will just move on the runway. Sometimes, 
they will be refueling they will be fueling the aeroplane with some aeroplane fuel and all refueling phase remember the first phase of the flight we why, why am i telling you i'll tell you okay first remember the phases of flight so that we compare the phases of flight with the phases of general anesthesia we as anesthetist hum log kya bolte hain malum jab bhi general anesthesia denge na patient ko hum log bolte hain are bhai kaun sa phase hai aisa bolta hum log bolte hain ki general anesthesia is lying like flying an aeroplane theek hai aeroplane ke bhi char phases honge first phase hoga kya kaun sa runway pe hoga plane plane will be on runway right runway where there is refueling of the plane second phase of the aeroplane is what the take off phase third phase of the aeroplane is what guys third phase of the aeroplane is come on maintenance phase and the last phase of the aeroplane is what guys it's the reversal phase reversal phase come on so ye char phases jo hai na char phases isko hum compare karenge general anesthesia ये जो फर्स्ट फेस होता है जनरल एनेस्थीजिया इट्स ऑन द इट्स ऑन द इट्स ऑन द रनवे राइट तो जो जनरल एनेस्थीजिया का द फर्स्ट फेस इज कॉल्ड एज प्री ऑक्सीजनेशन प्री ऑक्सीजनेशन राइट हाउ फॉर हाउ मच टाइम विल यू गिव ऑक्सीजन टू द पेशेंट अब देखो भाई फ्लाइट में कितना पेट्रोल डालेंगे वो तो नहीं पूछना पेशेंट को आपको देना है ऑक्सीजन राइट यू हैव टू गिव ऑक्सीजन टू द पेशेंट सो The first phase of general anesthesia is pre-oxygenation. The second phase, the takeoff phase of general anesthesia is what? It is called as induction phase. Induction phase. The third phase of general anesthesia is called as maintenance phase. It is called as maintenance phase. And the fourth phase of general anesthesia is called as reversal phase. Reversal phase. Okay. तो ये फ्लाइट के जो चार फेसेस बोला ना अभी इसको कंपेयर करेंगे हम जनरल एनेस्थीजिया के साथ तब अभी ये पेशेंट को दे रहे हो ऑक्सीजन ठीक है व्हेन यू आर गिविंग ऑक्सीजन टू द पेशेंट फॉर हाउ मेनी मिनट्स यू हैव टू प्री ऑक्सीजनेट यू हैव टू प्री ऑक्सीजनेट द पेशेंट फॉर एटलीस्ट थ्री टू फाइव मिनट्स एटलीस्ट हाउ मेनी मिनट्स गाइज थ्री टू फाइव मिनट्स विद हंड्रेड ऑफ ऑक्सीजन हंड्रेड ऑफ ऑक्सीजन तो ये रन फेस हो गया रन वे फेस इज गॉन आफ्टर रन फेस The second phase of general anesthesia. Abhi kya karna hai? Patient ko behosh karna. You have to make the patient unconscious. The second phase of general anesthesia is called as induction phase. Induction phase, right? Induction phase. So remember, guys, induction phase. In the induction phase, what we need to do? In the induction phase, our aim should be what? Mujhe karna hai patient ko behosh. I have to make the patient unconscious. Okay? The main aim of the induction phase is to make the patient. unconscious make the patient unconscious make the patient unconscious theek hai take third phase is called maintenance phase maintenance phase mein kya aim hoga maintain the patient in an unconscious state maintain the patient in an unconscious state maintain the patient in an unconscious state and last phase kya hoga reverse the patient reverse the patient from unconsciousness yani ki abhi usko hosh mein lana hai wapas hosh mein lana hai okay so once again okay so okay so guys just look over here four phases hai hum general anesthesia ke bare mein baat kar rahe hain four phases they are there in general anesthesia first phase of general anesthesia is called as pre oxygenation same like flight hai flight yahan pe hai bhi runway par hai runway par hai yani ki you have to refuel You are giving pre-oxygenation to the patient for three to five minutes with hundred percent of oxygen. This has been asked as an MCQ, guys. कितने मिनट के लिए आप ऑक्सीजन दोगे पेशेंट को? कितने मिनट के लिए दोगे? तीन से पांच मिनट with hundred percent of oxygen. Second is the induction phase. Third is the maintenance, and fourth is the reversal. अब आपको बेहोश करना है. If you want to make the patient unconscious, what will you do? Come on, guys. If you want to make the patient unconscious, what will you do? पेशेंट को बेहोश करना है अब ये मत बोलो कि पेशेंट को हम सुला देंगे पेशेंट को हम सुखा देंगे नो हाउ विल यू मेक द पेशेंट अनकॉन्शियस पेशेंट कैन बी मेड अनकॉन्शियस बाय यूजिंग व्हाट गाइस कम ऑन बाय यूजिंग व्हाट बाय इधर गिविंग आईवी इंडक्शन एजेंट और इनहलेशनल एजेंट बाय आईवी इंडक्शन और इनहलेशन इन द इंडक्शन फेज यू कैन मेक द पेशेंट अनकॉन्शियस बाय यूजिंग आईवी इंडक्शन और इनहलेशनल इंडक्शन इनहलेशनल इंडक्शन ठीक है इनहलेशनल इंडक्शन आईवी इंडक्शन में व्हाट आर द फोर आईवी इंडक्शन एजेंट्स अवेलेबल 
चार में से कोई एक दे दो प्रोपोफॉल इथामिडेट थायोपेंटोन कीटमी दीज आर द फोर आईवी इंडक्शन एजेंट्स प्रोपोफॉल इथामिडेट थायोपेंटोन एंड कीटमी एनी फोर ऑफ देम एनी वन ऑफ द फोर पेट के प्रोपोफॉल इथामिडेट थायोपेंटोन एंड कीटमी रिमेम्बर गाइज इन 99 और 98 परसेंट ऑफ द केसेस उसको आप लाइक like 98 ऑफ़ द पेशेंट्स को बेहोश कैसे करोगे बाय यूजिंग आईवी इंडक्शन बाय यूजिंग आईवी इंडक्शन चिल्ड्रन में यू यूज इनहलेशनल इंडक्शन इन चिल्ड्रन यू यूज इनहलेशनल इंडक्शन इनहलेशनल इंडक्शन एंड द इनहलेशनल इंडक्शन एजेंट दैट इज कॉमनली यूज इन चिल्ड्रेन इज सिवो फ्लोरेन सिवो फ्लोरेन सिवो फ्लोरेन एनीवेज गाइज We are talking about what the induction phase. Induction phase में आपको क्या करना है बेहोश करना है सिर्फ एक मेंटेनेंस फेज में उसका बेहोशी लाइक यू हैव टू मेंटेन हिम इन द अनकॉन्शियस स्टेट मेंटेन हिम इन अ अनकॉन्शियस स्टेट एंड रिवर्सल फेज तो पता है रिवर्सल मीन्स वॉट रिवर्सल मीन्स वॉट गाइज यू हैव टू मेक द थिंग्स रिवर्स रिवर्स करना है यानी कि यू हैव टू मेक द पेशेंट कॉन्शियस तो इन द मेंटेनेंस फेज यू यूज वॉट यू यूज इनहलेशनल एजेंट प्लस यू यूज muzzle relaxant you use what guys you use muzzle relaxant muzzle relaxant in the reversal phase you use a reversal agent you use a reversal agent we'll discuss the reversal agent later so anyways guys we are discussing about the phases in the phases of general anesthesia remember i told you patient can be made unconscious in the induction phase either by using iv or inhalational iv or inhalational ab iv mein bhi do type ke hote hain iv mein bhi do type ke hote hain एक होता है ओपियोइड आईवी वन इज द नॉन ओपियोइड आईवी मोस्ट कॉमनली वी गो फॉर नॉन ओपियोइड आईवी नॉन ओपियोइड आईवी ओपियोइड इंडक्शन इज यूजुअली गिवन फॉर द पर्सन हु इज हैविंग अ इजेक्शन फ्रैक्शन लेस देन 25 परसेंट इजेक्शन फ्रैक्शन इजेक्शन फ्रैक्शन जब आप टू डी को करवाते हो ना टू डायमेंशनल एको कराते हो ना टू डी एको टू डी एको में आता है ई एफ EF if it is good, EF is good means what? Your ejection fraction is good. Your heart is heart function is good. If your heart function is good, you can go for any other anesthesia technique. But if your ejection fraction is very less, then you can go for opioid anesthesia. Opioid anesthesia. Okay. So anyways, guys, we are discussing about what non-opioid. Patient ko behosh karna hai non-opioid. In non-opioid, you are having four IV induction agents. Four IV induction agents. What are the four IV induction agents? Sodium thiopentone is there, propofol is there, ethamidate is there, and ketamine is there. Sodium thiopentone, propofol, ethamidate, and ketamine. Come on, guys. This means that all four are given. Any one of the four should be given. Any one of the four should be given. Guys, are you able to listen? Are you able to understand the things till now? We have discussed. We have discussed the history. 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 We have discussed the Come on, you can just write in your comments. Clear? Right. Okay. Right, right. Okay. So, anyways, guys, we are discussing about the IV induction agent. In IV induction agent, there are four IV induction agents. Okay, one is thiopentone. Next is propofol. Next is come on, ethamidate, and last is ketamine. Guys, I'll be focusing on the main and the important points of these drugs. Okay, whenever sodium thiopentone comes to your mind, sodium thiopentone, one thing should come to your mind. Yellow color, your mind should blink. Yellow color. Why? Because sodium thiopentone is a, it's available as a yellow amorphous powder. What is first of all? What is sodium thiopentone? Sodium thiopentone is an ultra short acting barbiturate. Short sodium thiopentone is a Ultra short acting barbiturate. Ultra short acting barbiturate. Why it is regarded as ultra short acting barbiturate, guys? Why is sodium thiopentone regarded as ultra short acting barbiturate? It is regarded as ultra short acting barbiturate due to its rapid redistribution. Due to its rapid redistribution. Redistribution. ठीक है अल्ट्रा शॉर्ट एक्टिंग बार्बिट्रेट एज वेल एज ये अल्ट्रा शॉर्ट एक्टिंग क्यों है व्हाई बिकॉज इट इज इट इज कमान इट्स अल्ट्रा शॉर्ट एक्टिंग ड्यू टू इट्स रैपिड रीडिस्ट्रीब्यूशन रैपिड रीडिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ठीक है 
सो सोडियम थायोपेंटोन सोडियम थायोपेंटोन सो सोडियम थायोपेंटोन से आपको सिर्फ दो चीजें आना चाहिए माइंड में एक हो गया सोडियम थायोपेंटोन येलो कलर का है अल्ट्रा शॉर्ट एक्टिंग ड्यू टू इट्स रैपिड रिडिस्ट्रीब्यूशन वन थिंग इज डन सेकेंड थिंग दैट शुड कम टू योर माइंड एस सोडियम थायोपेंटोन सोडियम थायोपेंटोन इज माई इज द बेस्ट फ्रेंड ऑफ सी एन एस एंड एनिमी ऑफ अदर सिस्टम सोडियम थायोपेंटोन इज बॉट गाइज बेस्ट फ्रेंड ऑफ सी एन एस एंड एनिमी ऑफ अदर सिस्टम ये एक लाइन अगर आपको याद हो गई ना तो यू कैन इजिली सॉल्व द एमसीक्यूज ऑफ सोडियम थायोपेंट ओके सो सोडियम थायोपेंटोन इज द बेस्ट फ्रेंड ऑफ सी एन एस एंड एनिमी ऑफ रेस्ट अदर सिस्टम एनिमी ऑफ रेस्ट अदर सिस्टम When I am talking about this, when I am talking about this, what does it mean? Okay. When I am talking about this, what does it mean, guys? It. So remember, first of all, sodium thiopentone is the best friend of TNS, enemy of other systems, enemy of other systems, other system. राइट तो रिमेंबर गाइस अगर कोई ड्रग किसी की बेस्ट फ्रेंड है जैसा कि सोडियम थायोपेंटोन इज द बेस्ट फ्रेंड ऑफ सीएनएस व्हाट विल बी द इफेक्ट्स ऑफ द ड्रग ऑन सीएनएस इट विल हैव वेरी गुड इफेक्ट्स ऑन सीएनएस यस और नो वेरी गुड इफेक्ट ऑन सीएनएस सो बेसिकली दैट ड्रग विल बी ड्यू टू इट्स इफेक्ट ऑन सीएनएस इट विल बी रिगार्डेड एज ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस फॉर सीएनएस यस और नो ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस फॉर सीएनएस बट इफ इट इज एन एनिमी ऑफ अदर सिस्टम फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल व्हाट अदर सिस्टम्स आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट other systems include what the cardiovascular the respiratory the muscle system and the pain system theek okay? hai cardiovascular respiratory muscle and pain so i told you sodium thiopentone is what guys sodium thiopentone is the best friend of cns best friend of cns means what will it do sodium thiopentone decreases the icp and all remember guys there is a difference between a best friend and a good friend गुड फ्रेंड में सिर्फ एक ही क्वालिटी होती है सोडियम थायोपेंटोन को मैंने कहा इट इज द बेस्ट फ्रेंड तो व्हाट गुड क्वालिटीज ऑफ सोडियम थायोपेंटोन दे आर थ्री गुड क्वालिटीज ऑफ सोडियम थायोपेंटोन ऑन सीएनएस व्हाट थ्री गुड क्वालिटीज ऑन सीएनएस गाइस वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एमसीक्यू क्वालिटीज कम ऑन बेस्ट फ्रेंड है सीएनएस का तो सीएनएस का अगर वो बेस्ट फ्रेंड है तो इट कैन बी गिवन इन ऑल डिजीजेस ऑफ सीएनएस यस और नो तो सोडियम थायोपेंटोन कैन बी गिवन फॉर हेड इंजरी और न्यूरो सर्जरी हेड इंजरी और न्यूरो सर्जरी सोडियम थायोपेंटोन इज हैविंग एंटी एपिलेप्टिक प्रॉपर्टी एंटी एपिलेप्टिक प्रॉपर्टी सोडियम थायोपेंटोन कैन बी यूज फॉर नार्को एनालिस कमान गाइज वॉट इज नार्को एनालिस नार्को एनालिस ट्रूथ टेस्ट ट्रूथ टेस्ट डेट इज कॉल्ड एज नार्को एनालिस सो रिमेंबर गाइज सोडियम थायोपेंटोन इज द बेस्ट फ्रेंड ऑफ सी एन एस बेस्ट फ्रेंड यानी कि इट कैन बी गिवन इन हेड इंजरी Neuro head injury and neuro surgery. Remember, guys, it's not the previously it was the best drug of choice for head injury neuro surgery, but nowadays the best drug for head injury neuro surgery is propofol. But still, remember that point. Best friend of CNS. Three good qualities on CNS is what head injury or neuro surgery. के लिए sodium thiopentone is the second best choice. Apart from that, it's having anti-epileptic properties. Third is what it can be used for narco analysis. Narco analysis. Now, guys, just look over here. Enemy of other systems means what? Come on, enemy है बोलते ही वहाँ से आएंगे उसके contraindications. यानी के it is enemy of CVS. CVS में क्या enemy है means it is contraindicated in contraindicated in sodium thiopentone is a enemy of CVS. That means what, guys? It is contraindicated in shock. Apart from shock, it is also contraindicated in heart disease. Very good. Heart disease. Heart disease. It's an enemy of respiratory. Come on, guys. Respiratory system का enemy है. So what will it do to the respiratory? Enemy है means it will be contraindicated in asthma. Contraindicated in asthma. Contraindicated in asthma. It has no effect on pain. Remember, guys. It has no effect on muscle, guys. No effect on muscle. No effect on muscle. and regarding the pain sodium thiopentone produces pain during injection it produces pain during injection pain during injection pain during injection okay so once again guys we are discussing about what we are discussing about the 
effects of all these are MCQs, guys. Can you remember, guys? Can you remember sodium thiopentone se related MCQs? Agar aayenge, to do hi line yaad rakhenge. Bhi dekho, sodium thiopentone ke liye na do hi chizein yaad rakho. Sodium thiopentone aapke mind mein aagya. Bol to aare bhi yellow color amorphous powder hai and ultra short acting. Theek hai done. Why ultra short acting? Why? Because rapid redistribution. Uske alawa kya hai? Sodium thiopentone to bhiya sodium thiopentone is the best friend of CNS and enemy of rest others. अगर आप ये याद रख लोगे तो ऑल द एमसीक्यूज विल बी कवर्ड सीएनएस का बेस्ट फ्रेंड है यानी कि ऑल गुड क्वालिटीज एंड व्हाई एम आई कॉलिंग बेस्ट फ्रेंड व्हाई बिकॉज़ इट इज हैविंग थ्री गुड क्वालिटीज थ्री गुड क्वालिटीज इवन दो इट्स अ सेकंड बेस्ट चॉइस फॉर हेड इंजरी न्यूरोसर्जरी बट इट इज हैविंग अदर टू क्वालिटीज दैट्स व्हाई इट इज द बेस्ट फ्रेंड ऑफ सीएनएस एनिमी ऑफ अदर्स एनिमी ऑफ अदर्स इज दिस थिंग क्लियर गाइस यस और नो कम ऑन Now can can you remember? Bold do, bhaiya, bold do. Yes, come on, right. Next is what propofol. A propofol ke baare mein agar kuch aage, a propofol. To pehle propofol ke baare mein agar kuch yaad bhi aayega, to propofol is a milk. Yes, clear. ओके प्रोपोफॉल प्रोपोफॉल से क्या याद रखेंगे प्रोपोफॉल इज अ मिल्की व्हाइट सॉल्यूशन प्रोपोफॉल क्या है भाई प्रोपोफॉल इज अ मिल्की व्हाइट सॉल्यूशन मिल्की व्हाइट सॉल्यूशन ओके प्रोपोफॉल के लिए अगर कुछ याद रखना है एनीमी बेस्ट फ्रेंड नहीं प्रोपोफॉल के लिए सिर्फ एक ही चीज याद रखो प्रोपोफॉल इज यूज्ड एज एन आईवी इंडक्शन एजेंट ऑफ चॉइस इन मेनी ऑफ द कंडीशंस इन मेनी ऑफ द कंडीशंस ठीक है सो प्रोपोफॉल इज यूज्ड एज एन आईवी इंडक्शन एजेंट ऑफ चॉइस इन We are just we are talking in context of these systems only, not the gastrointestinal tract and all. Gastrointestinal tract के लिए any any drug can be given, okay? Propofol. Regarding propofol, what we need to discuss is propofol used as an IV induction agent of choice. IV induction agent of choice in what all conditions? What all conditions? Just look over here, guys. Propofol we are discussing. Propofol used as an oh, yeah. Propofol used as an IV induction agent of choice in what all condition come on guys ye bahut important hai propofol ka kaun se conditions mein very good propofol is used for day care surgery day care surgery come on guys what is day care surgery what is meant by day care surgery day care surgery yani ki any surgery which is done on the same day and patient is being discharged on the same day that is the day care surgery डे केयर सर्जरी में यू हैव टू गिव प्रोपोफॉल व्हाई बिकॉज प्रोपोफॉल वर्क्स वर्क्स इन द ब्लड और प्रोपोफॉल स्टेज इन द ब्लड फॉर अ शॉर्ट ड्यूरेशन राइट इट्स हैविंग अ शॉर्ट एलिमिनेशन टी टी हाफ ऑफ लेस देन 2 आवर्स सो इट्स यूज्ड फॉर डे केयर सर्जरी अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट प्रोपोफॉल इज यूज्ड एज अ आईवी इंडक्शन एजेंट ऑफ चॉइस इन न्यूरो सर्जरी एज़ वेल एज़ हेड इंजरी न्यूरो सर्जरी एज़ वेल एज़ हेड इंजरी इन न्यूरो सर्जरी एंड हेड इंजरी आल्सो यू यूज propofol you use propofol apart from that apart from that propofol is also used as an iv induction agent of choice in what all condition ek ek ho gaya day care surgery ek ho gaya neuro surgery and head injury apart from that propofol is having anti emetic property anti emetic property this is the only iv induction agent that has anti emetic property that prevents nausea and vomiting Apart from that, what else we need to remember regarding propofol is what? Propofol is an IV induction agent that could be given for or IV induction agent of choice for LMA insertion. What is LMA, guys? What is meant by LMA? What is LMA? Laryngeal mask airway. Laryngeal mask airway. अगर आपको tube डालने नहीं आया, कोई problem नहीं. There will be a device called as LMA. You can easily put the LMA. Right, so propofol can be used as a IV induction agent of choice for LMA insertion, laryngeal mask airway insertion. Apart from that, propofol can also be used as a component of TIVA. TIVA, come on guys, what is TIVA? TIVA means what? Total intravenous anesthesia. Or basically, you can say that general anesthesia given without inhalational agent is TIVA, without using inhalational agent. So just giving IV agent that is called as TIVA. So propofol can be used as a component of 
Eva. So remember, guys, come on. What are the what are the things? Remember, all these are MCQs of propofol for decay surgery, for neurosurgery and head injury. It's having anti-emetic property for LMA insertion for Tiva. What is Tiva, guys? Total intravenous anesthesia. Total intravenous anesthesia. Apart from that, propofol is also used as an IV induction agent of choice in AIP. AIP. What is AIP? AIP is Acute intermittent porphyria. Acute intermittent porphyria. Now, guys, some of you are asking in LMA insertion, we use lignocaine gel. Just look over here, guys. Look over here. LMA up jab daloge patient ko. Okay, there will be two set of patient, patient A and patient B. A patient A hoga wo bhot hyper hoga. 80 to 90 percent of the patients are very much hyper only. Surgery hai bolo to hyper rehenge. Yes or no? Agar aapko LMA dalna hai wo patient mein, who is hyper, you have to first sedate him. So that his anxiety is gone. Propofol de do usko. Pola sa propofol de do. He'll be sedated. Wo jayega sedation mein. Uske baad mein you put an LMA. You put an LMA. But before putting LMA also, you put what? You put some lignocaine gel on the LMA. Why? Why? Because you are putting propofol. Sorry, you are putting the LMA into the hypopharynx. Baaz oghat hota kya hai? LMA nikalne ke baad mein there will be irritation in the hypopharynx. If you put lignocaine, there won't be any irritation and there won't be any pain. Okay, so remember guys, for sedation purpose, the best drug for LMA insertion, it is always propofol. It is always propofol. If you want to put an lignocaine gel and apply, you can put. But remember, it's not mandatory. But for putting, L for putting LMA, if you want to sedate the patient, then you have to give propofol. Okay, chalo. Next, propofol, ka remember guys, can you remember six points? Six points of propofol we'll review and then we can proceed to the other and other uh, IV induction agent. What are the six points of propofol, guys? Come on. What are the six points of propofol? Propofol decade surgery ke le denge. Propofol is having anti-emetic and anti-pruritic property. It can be given in acute intermittent porphyria. It can be given for LMA insertion and it can be given for TIVA. TIVA is total intravenous anesthesia. Yes, six points are very, very important regarding propofol theek hai last ek yaad rakhenge kya propofol ka ek contraindication yaad rakhenge theek hai contraindication kya yaad rakhenge propofol you can't give as a long term infusion zyada zyada time ke liye propofol you can't give if you give propofol for a long term infusion patient might land up into propofol infusion syndrome the side effect of propofol is what guys pis propofol infusion syndrome ठीक है, so this is regarding propofol. Propofol से मुझे क्या याद आएगा? Propofol milky white solution, milky white solution and IV induction agent of choice in six condition. ये six points याद रखेंगे हम propofol के. Thiopentone बोलते हैं yellow amorphous powder, short acting barbiturate. Short acting barbiturate. Why it is short acting? Why because rapid redistribution. ये एक point हो गया. Second point क्या याद रखेंगे? Thiopentone Thiopentone on the systems, come on guys. Come on. Thiopentone on the systems. Thiopentone on the line mein aadha, pure, pure MCQs cover hongi. Thiopentone is the best friend of CNS. Enemy of others. Enemy of others. Okay. So propofol ka ye ho gaya. Thiopentone ka ho gaya. Ethomidate padne se pehle ketamine ke baare mein padhenge. Ketamine. Come on guys. Ketamine. Guys, thiopentone yaad hai na aapko thiopentone. Everyone. Thik hai. Thiopentone, you remember thiopentone. Thiopentone, अगर आपको अच्छे से याद है ना, ketamine is opposite of thiopentone. First of all, I'll just describe you what is ketamine. Ketamine is what, guys? Ketamine is a pencyclidine derivative. It's an NMDA receptor blocker. Ketamine is a NMDA receptor blocker. NMDA receptor blocker or it is a pencyclidine derivative. Pencyclidine derivative. Just look over here. अब मैं कीटामिन ऑपोजिट ऑफ थायोपेंटोन मींस व्हाट इफ आई से इन वन लाइन व्हाट आई नीड टू रिमेंबर गाइस थायोपेंटोन वाज बेस्ट फ्रेंड ऑफ सीएनएस एनिमी ऑफ अदर कीटामिन इज ऑपोजिट टू थायोपेंटोन सो गाइस कैन यू टेल मी व्हाट विल बी कीटामिन टू द सीएनएस एंड अदर सिस्टम्स चलो भाई कीटामिन इज अ 
come on i don't expect this enemy of cns no i am telling ketamine is opposite of thiopentone thiopentone best friend tha best friend ka opposite kya hoga ketamine is the worst enemy of cns worst enemy ye yaad rakho bhai exam ko thode din hai isliye i am trying to just tell you this points ketamine is the worst enemy of cns best friend of other systems theek hai ketamine is what guys ketamine is the i'm just writing it over here ketamine is the worst enemy of cns worst enemy of cns and best friend of other system best friend of other system when i am telling that ketamine is the worst enemy what i mean guys what i mean with the worst enemy iska cns ka best friend of other system chalo bolo bhai worst enemy of cns means what CNS के कंडीशंस में कीटामिन शुड बी कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेटेड ठीक है धोखे वाला दोस्त नहीं भाई धोखे वाला दोस्त के वर्स्ट एनिमी है धोखे वाला कोई दोस्त नहीं वर्स्ट एनिमी है ये ठीक है तो कीटामिन वर्स्ट एनिमी ऑफ सी एन एस मीन्स वॉट कैन आई गिव कीटामिन रिमेम्बर कीटामिन वर्स्ट एनिमी ऑफ सी एन एस विल इंक्रीज द आई सी पी इट विल इंक्रीज द आई सी पी सो कैन आई गिव कीटामिन इन अ पेशेंट हु सफरिंग विद हेड इंजरी और न्यूरो सर्जरी नो वर्स्ट एनिमी यानी कि इट विल हैव वॉट कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेशन बेस्ट फ्रेंड मीन्स वॉट it can be used for the for that purpose and all so worst enemy of cns means what come on what are the contraindications guys come on contraindications kya honge can i give ketamine in head injury no neurosurgery no neurosurgery or head injury mein pehle se patient ka intracranial pressure high hoga ketamine doge hat jayega patient ka sir theek hai so ketamine is contraindicated in head injury ketamine can you give in in epilepsy no ketamine is contraindicated remember guys it's contraindicated in head injury neurosurgery it is contraindicated in epilepsy it is also contraindicated in what guys it is contraindicated in come on cns ke aur kya problems honge it is contraindicated in schizophrenia schizophrenia why it is contraindicated in schizophrenia why because ketamine causes hallucinations sune honge na hallucinations ke bare mein recent right nadeem sir se sune honge na hallucinations Ketamine causes hallucinations. Ketamine अगर कोई पेशेंट को दे दोगे ना यू विल रिमेंबर दैट ड्रग फॉर योर लाइफ वेन यू गिव कीटामिन टू अ पेशेंट यू विल रिमेंबर दैट आई हैव गिवन कीटामिन टू दिस पेशेंट फॉर योर लाइफ वाई बिकॉज द एक्सपीरियंस यू विल एंजॉय एंड द पेशेंट विल एंजॉय ठीक है दैट दैट्स टोटली डिफरेंट आफ्टर गिविंग कीटामिन एज अ पेशेंट इज रिकवरिंग फ्रॉम द इफेक्ट ऑफ कीटामिन पेशेंट विल बी टेलिंग द डॉक्टर आई थिंक आई एम फ्लाइंग समटाइम्स द पेशेंट विल बी टेलिंग द डॉक्टर i am able to see my uh, i am able to see uh, some uh, some cartoon characters and all right so remember guys just look over here ketamine while the patient is recovering from the effect of ketamine patient will have hallucinations and delusions right hallucination delusion nystagmus and all so that are those are called as what those are called as dissociative anesthetic symptoms so remember ketamine is causes hallucination that's why it is contraindicated in schizophrenia schizophrenia mein contraindicated hai ketamine is also contraindicated in glaucoma why it is contraindicated in glaucoma why because it increases the intraocular pressure ketamine increases the intraocular pressure so contraindications of ketamine kitne hain ek hai nahi bahut sare contraindications hai what bahut sare head injury epilepsy schizophrenia glaucoma in all these conditions ketamine is contraindicated so now Guys, remember MCQ. If ketamine is related, I am and they are asking ketamine is contraindicated in. Bolte hi, understand that contraindication means enemy hai na CNS ka to ek CNS hai contraindication sign. Right? It is the best friend of what systems, guys? Come on, what systems I am talking about? The cardiovascular, the respiratory. Come on, cardiovascular ho gaya, respiratory ho gaya. What are the other systems? The muscle and come on, guys. cardiovascular system respiratory system muscle and come on pain pain system okay so ketamine ketamine is the best friend best friend kiska hai bola main cbs ka cbs ka best friend hai means ketamine is the iv induction agent of choice in shock iv induction agent of choice in shock respiratory it is regard ketamine is regarded as the iv induction agent of choice in asthma in asthma in asthma 
in muzzle it is just increasing the muzzle tone it is increasing the muzzle tone pain ketamine is the only iv induction agent that is painless that is painless painless meaning what it does not produce pain during injection right so ketamine is the best friend of other systems remember guys ketamine is the worst enemy of cns best friend of other system best friend of other system is this thing clear ketamine is regarded as the iv induction agent of choice in asthma why because uh, in asthma it, in, it it causes bronchodilation and all in shock why because it is increasing the bpn heart rate it's a right so you need to remember one line of ketamine guys what's that one line what's that one line come on be fast one line of ketamine jaldi bhai one line of ketamine is it is a worst enemy of cns and best friend of other system worst enemy of cns and best friend of other system best friend of other system come on guys coming to the last iv induction agent which is called as ethomidate 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 means what ethomidate is also an iv induction agent which is regarded as the most cardio stable which is regarded as the most cardio stable cardio stable cardio stable means what cardio stable means what neither it is increasing the bp or decreasing the bp neither it is increasing the heart rate or decreasing to kar kya raha hai it is maintaining the bp and pulse rate ethomidate maintains the bp and pulse rate that's why ethomidate is the iv induction agent of choice in cardiac patients in what patients guys cardiac patients cardiac patients okay ethomidate ke liye aur ek cheez yaad rakhenge come on guys in ethomidate we have to remember one more point of ethomidate one more point regarding ethomidate you can't give ethomidate as a long term infusion you can't give ethomidate as a long term infusion when you give ethomidate as a long term infusion long term infusion it leads to what guys long term infusion of ethomidate leads to what it inhibits an enzyme called as 11 beta hydroxylase 11 So remember, long-term infusion of ethomidate inhibits enzyme called as 11 beta hydroxylase. Beta hydroxylase that that can cause adrenal suppression. That can cause adrenal suppression. Adrenal suppression. Okay. So it inhibits 11 beta hydroxylase that can cause adrenal adrenal suppression. that's regarding ethomidate guys that's the point that we need to know regarding the ethomidate so guys remember thiopentone propofol ketamine and ethomidate these are the four iv induction agent the most cardio stable is ethomidate right so i told you thiopentone is the best friend of cns enemy of other system ketamine is opposite of sodium thiopentone ketamine is opposite of sodium thiopentone okay next coming to the muzzle relaxants guys muzzle relax is this thing clear till now yes or no in general anesthesia is this are these points clear come on good good all clear all clear okay right right okay so this was regarding what guys this was regarding what this was regarding the IV induction agent. After IV induction agents, now we'll discuss about the muzzle relaxants. Muzzle relaxants. They go by muzzle relaxants are divided into two categories. Remember, in general anesthesia, I told you we are not at all taking help of one drug. We are using a combination of drugs. We are using an IV induction agent. We are using inhalational agents. We are using muzzle relaxants. All are having different purposes. IV induction agents are used to make the patient unconscious. inhalational agents are used to maintain the patient in an unconscious state whereas muzzle relaxants are usually used to make the muscles relax or make the muscles paralyzed in muzzle relaxants there are two categories of muzzle relaxants there are two categories what two categories guys one category of muzzle relaxant is called as depolarizing muzzle relaxant whereas the other category of muzzle relaxant is called as non depolarizing muzzle relaxant one is called as depolarizing other is called as non depolarizing muzzle relaxant okay now 
in the remember I, I told you they are depolarizing and non depolarizing in depolarizing muscle relaxants we are having only one that we need to remember that is choline the other name for choline is succinium or other name for succinium is succinyl succinyl choline succinyl choline theek hai choline or succinium or succinyl choline is the same thing theek hai so we are discussing about first about depolarizing muscle relaxant depolarizing muscle relaxant. in depolarizing we are discussing about choline so the gunshot point that you need to remember of choline is what choline is regarded as the fastest as well as the shortest acting muscle relaxant fastest and shortest acting muscle relaxant shortest acting muscle relaxant very very important in overall universe of muscle relaxant this look over here guys if this is the universe of muscle relaxant i will divide this universe into two halves ek half ko bolenge hum depolarized other half will be called as non depolarized non depolarized so if the question is asking you in overall muscle relaxant category which is the shortest and the fastest your answer should be choline if the question is different the shortest acting non depolarizing then you have to choose then you have to pick from the non depolarizing and all and all okay so we are discussing about what succinyl choline or succinyl succinyl choline or succinyl is regarded as the fastest as well as the shortest acting muscle relaxant fastest and the shortest acting muscle relaxant okay next what else we need to remember succinyl choline where it is being metabolized this succinyl choline is being metabolized in the plasma by plasma pseudo cholinesterase by plasma pseudo cholinesterase cholinesterase right so choline is being metabolized by plasma by plasma pseudo cholinesterase right some patients might have pseudo cholinesterase deficiency if the patient is having pseudo cholinesterase deficiency then that patient can land up into scolin apnea scolin apnea normal if at all scolin is given to a normal person who is having a normal pseudo cholinesterase level patient will recover within a short period of time but if you give scolin to a patient who is having pseudo cholinesterase deficiency then that patient lands up into scolin apnea right so remember guys why scolin apnea is seen if the patient is having pseudo cholinesterase deficiency but how will you come to know whether the patient is having pseudo cholinesterase deficiency or not for diagnosing pseudo cholinesterase deficiency okay i'll repeat it once again succinyl choline is being metabolized in the plasma by plasma pseudo cholinesterase thode se patient dekho bhai there are two patients in one patient his levels of pseudo cholinesterase are normal when i give scolin to him he will his muscles will relax and after some time he will his muscles will become normal also after some time the muscles contract also yani ki he will recover easily but if the patient is having pseudo cholinesterase deficiency and then i give succinyl choline what will happen what will happen the patient muscle will be relaxed for a longer period of time that thing is called as choline apnea choline apnea choline apnea is seen primarily due to deficiency or atypical pseudo cholinesterase how will you diagnose this deficiency guys how will you diagnose this deficiency the deficiency of the deficiency of pseudo cholinesterase can be diagnosed by come on guys pseudo cholinesterase deficiency can be diagnosed by what guys by a test called as dibucane number test dibucane number test dibucane number test so remember the Choline is regarded as the fastest and the shortest acting, metabolized in the plasma pseudo cholinesterase. Okay, and deficiency of pseudo cholinesterase can be diagnosed by what test? Dibucane number test. Dibucane number test. Apart from that, we need to know about the side effects of choline. Side effect of choline. The most common side effect of choline is muscle soreness. Muscle soreness. That's regarded as the most common side effect of succinyl choline. Muscle soreness. Apart from muscle soreness, apart from muscle soreness, other side effect of choline is what? Choline can cause hyperkalemia. Hyperkalemia. It increases the potassium by what? Now, 
now when you give scoline to a patient it increases the potassium by 0.5 to 1 milli equivalent per liter it increases the potassium by 0.5 to 1 milli equivalent per liter last is what guys the most dreadful side effect of scoline is what it can cause malignant hyperthermia it can cause what guys malignant hyperthermia malignant hyperthermia is it simply a malignant hyperthermia this is the most dreadful but the most common complication of scoline is what muscle soreness muscle soreness muscle soreness right so scoline agar aap doge patient ko to itna yaad rakho patient pseudocholinesterase level should be normal how will you come to know if the patient pseudocholinesterase level is normal by doing a test dibuke number test side effect of scoline the most common side effect is what guys the most common side effect is muscle soreness second is hyperkalemia remember guys if a person is already hyperkalemic can you give scoline can you give scoline to a person who is already hyperkalemic yes or no come on no no right example a patient is suffering with kidney disorder renal failure he will be hyperkalemic if you give scoline to that patient what will happen patient will land up into arrhythmias that can cause cardiac arrest that can cause cardiac arrest so you need to remember guys scoline is contraindicated in already hyperkalemic patient already hyperkalemic patient coming to the other category of muscle relaxation which are called as non depolarizing depolarizing muscle relaxation clear hai guys only one hai scoline yaad rakhenge scoline and scoline ke gunshot points that you have to remember i told you okay in non depolarizing muscle relaxation there are many muscle relaxation muscle relaxation ending with the term curium and ending with the term curonium curium and curonium curium and curonium examples of curium are atracurium cisatracurium mevacurium gantacurium there are many many ones theek hai so what we need to discuss is we need to know which is the fastest which is the shortest and all okay so remember guys in the non depolarizing muscle relaxation category the fastest acting the fastest acting non depolarizing muscle relaxant is what the fastest is what guys fastest is rocuronium 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 okay rocuronium i usually refer rocuronium as a rock star rocuronium is a rock star rock star the fast acting okay fastest acting is what rocuronium rocuronium is the fastest acting muscle relaxant okay now coming to what guys shortest acting which is the shortest acting non depolarizing muscle relaxant guys remember in muscle relaxant total category the shortest total muscle relaxant category the shortest is succinylcholine if the mcq is asking you non depolarizing you have to just differentiate succinylcholine is a depolarizing agent if there is there are they are asking you about non depolarizing then remember guys the shortest acting non depolarizing is what guys the shortest is mevacurium mevacurium the longest acting non depolarizing is doxacurium doxacurium right just look over here guys just just look over here there is a mnemonic to remember it my short dog as long tail my short dog has long tail my short means what remember guys shortest is what meva curium it starts with m so meva curium is the shortest acting non depolarizing shortest acting non depolarizing muscle relaxant okay dog has long d and l so just look over here guys long means it will be d longest acting is what doxacurium doxacurium is the longest acting non depolarizing muscle relaxant longest acting non depolarizing muscle relaxant is this thing clear guys come on ye fastest to apne ko pata hai rockstar ko aap agar agar aap koi concert ke liye bulaoge wo aayega gana gayega and it will he will just take his money and he will go off the fastest acting the fastest acting non depolarizing is rockstar rockuronium shortest acting is what guys come on 
for the shortest acting come on for that mnemonic is my short dog has long tail so meva curium is the shortest and dogs curium is the longest is it clear guys yes or no right is it clear you can write in the comment box clear hai ya nahi hai bolo bhai right so yes yes right next so we are discussing about what guys we are discussing about the non depolarizing muscle relaxant non depolarizing muscle relaxant we know the shortest we know the longest acting muscle relaxant now we need to know about what we need to know about the other muscle relaxants remember guys when uh, uh, like whenever you take any drug that drugs gets metabolized in the liver and gets excreted through the kidneys but there are two muscle relaxants that are basically not neither metabolized in the liver nor they are excreted through the kidneys there are two muscle relaxants that are basically bypassing the liver and kidney so remember where are they, where are they being metabolized they are being metabolized by a spontaneous degradation process which is called as hoffman elimination what are those muscle relaxants guys remember atracurium and cis atracurium what are the muscle relaxants that have spontaneous degradation the muscle relaxants that have spontaneous degradation are atracurium and cis atracurium cis atracurium right atracurium and cis atracurium atracurium and cis atracurium these are the drugs which are undergoing spontaneous degradation which is called as what hoffman elimination hoffman elimination now guys think and tell if they have nothing to do with the liver and kidney logically what does it mean i can give this muscle relaxant to the, uh, any person who is suffering with what failure liver failure and kidney failure liver failure and kidney failure right so remember atracurium and cis atracurium both can be given for liver failure and kidney failure but what is the thing nowadays which is the best one dekho bhai atrac and cis atrac both can be given for liver failure or kidney failure but which is the best one just look over here atracurium atracurium was having some side effects was having some side effect what were the side effects of atracurium atracurium had side effects of producing a compound called as laudanosine laudanosine atracurium was having a side effect that it produces laudanosine one more side effect of atracurium was what it was causing histamine release histamine release due to these two side effects nowadays atracurium is not the first choice the first choice of muscle relaxant that could be given in renal failure as well as hepatic failure is what it is cis atracurium second choice is atracurium second choice is atracurium the first choice is what guys what's the first choice what's the first choice the first choice for hepatic and renal failure is cis atracurium why cis atracurium is having less side effects uske koi side effects hi nahi hai it is not producing that much amount of laudanosine and no histamine release Whereas atracurium was having side effect of laudanosine and histamine release. Laudanosine and histamine release. Okay. So remember, guys, in the muscle relaxant, you just have to remember these points. Muscle relaxants, I'll divide. Remember, guys, which is the shortest and the fastest acting muscle relaxant? Shortest and the fastest, it is succinylcholine or succinylmethionine. Only one. If the question is asking you the shortest acting non depolarizing. So my short dog has long tail. Shortest acting non depolarizing means my short means meva curium short acting. Okay. Dog long means what? Dog's curium is longest. Done. So we know the shortest. We know the longest non depolarizing. Then we need to know the fastest. Which is the fastest, guys? Fastest. I told you. Rock star. Rock star will be the fastest. Rock coronium is the fastest. Right. Apart from that, I also told you. There are two muscle relaxants that are bypassing the liver and kidney. What are the two muscle relaxants? Atrac and cis atrac. But which is more better? Cis atracurium is more better. Cis atracurium is more better. Right? So nowadays, the muscle relaxant of choice for hepatic and renal failure it is always cis atracurium. Second best choice is atracurium. It is atracurium. Okay? Is this thing clear, guys? Coming to the next category, which is called as what? inhalational agents inhalational agents guys 
Is it clear? Yes or no? Inhalational agents. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes, yes. Is exam rescheduled? Ho gaya? Oh, pata nahi. Okay. So, coming to what, guys? Coming to inhalational agent. Inhalational agent. Inhalational agent. What we are discussing now, guys, is about the inhalational agent. Come on. What is the function of inhalational agents? Inhalational agents are the agents that are used to. Come on. Inhalational agents are used to maintain the patient in an unconscious state. Maintain the patient in what state? What state, guys? In unconscious state. Unconscious state. Inhalational agents are the agents that are used to maintain the patient in an unconscious state. Ultra clear. That's very good. So remember guys, inhalational agents, I told you, they work on two principles. First principle that inhalational agent work is the principle of MAC. The second principle is the principle of blood gas coefficient. Blood gas coefficient. What is MAC? MAC ka full form hai minimal alveolar concentration. Minimal alveolar concentration. Okay? Yani ke MAC is what guys? How much amount of inhalational agent, how much concentration of inhalational agent is required to produce unconsciousness? That is MAC. Okay? So remember guys, inhalational agent depends on MAC and blood gas coefficient. MAC is what? Minimal alveolar concentration. MAC indicates the potency. MAC indicates the potency of inhalational agent. MAC indicates the potency of inhalational agent. Any inhalational agent, remember guys, MAC indicates the potency, but MAC and, MAC and potency are always inversely proportional. MAC and potency are always inversely proportional. Meaning what? Any inhalational agent that is having a high MAC value, it will be least potent. Any inhalational agent that is having a low MAC value, it will be most potent. Most potent. Any inhalational agent that is having a high MAC value, least potent. Low MAC value, most potent. So guys, let's just look over here. Inhalational agent may just remember the MAC values of two agents. They, they won't be asking the MAC values of each and, each and every drug. They'll be asking you the highest and lowest MAC. That has been commonly tested. So remember the inhalational agent having a high MAC value is nitrous. Nitrous has the MAC value of 105. Whereas methoxyfluorine has the MAC value of how much guys? Methoxyfluorine has the MAC value of 0.16. Now, you guys tell me. Okay. Right, right. You guys tell me which is the high potent and which is the least potent. High MAC value, low MAC value. Tell me which is the high potent and which is the least potent. Come on, guys. I'm waiting for your answers. Which is the high potent guys? Come on, which is the highest potent? Very good. Methoxyfluorine is the highest potent. Why it is highest potent? Or it is why it is the most potent? Why? Because it's having a low MAC value. Whereas nitrous is what? It is the least potent. Least potent. Right? 105 is the MAC value of nitrous. Yani ke much amount of nitrous is needed to make the patient unconscious. Whereas methoxyfluorine thoda bhi de to patient will become unconscious. So remember guys. High MAC value, least potent. Low MAC value is highly potent. Low MAC value is highly potent. Right? So, nitrous and methoxyfluorine we have already discussed. Now, remember as nitrous is least potent, it can't be used as a sole gas. Nitrous should always be used as a carrier gas. Nitrous should be used as what gas, guys? Carrier gas. Carrier gas means what? It should be always supported with some other gas. And they should be halothane, then you can use nitrous. Nitrous sole alone gas ke vesa use nahi kar paenge, Right? So remember, nitrous is what? It is the least potent and it's always used as a carrier gas. Next is what? Blood gas coefficient. Blood gas coefficient. Regarding the blood gas coefficient, remember 
MAC was indicating the potency of the drug. Blood gas coefficient indicates the speed of onset. Blood gas coefficient indicates the it indicates the speed of onset and recovery. But again, blood gas is also inversely proportional. Any agent that is having a high blood gas coefficient, it will be slow onset. Slow onset. Any agent that is having low blood gas coefficient, it will be fast onset. It will be fast onset. Is this thing clear? High blood gas coefficient, slow onset. Low blood gas coefficient, fast onset. Fast onset. Is this thing clear? Yes or no? So, here also you have to remember the one which is having a high blood gas. High blood gas again it is methoxyfluorane. Methoxyfluorane. It is having a blood gas coefficient of 16%. Whereas, the low blood gas coefficient is seen with desflurane. Desflurane 0 0.42. 0 0.42. Nitrous is having a blood gas coefficient of 0.47. Desflurane is 0 0.42. So, remember guys, which is the fast onset and which is the slow onset, which is the fastest acting inhalational agent and which is the slowest onset. Come on guys, low blood gas, fast onset, high blood gas, slow onset. So, desflurane is the fastest acting whereas methoxyfluorine is the slowest acting. Remember guys, we are just dealing with inhalational agent. An inhalational agent that is having a, inhalational agent depends on MAC and blood gas coefficient. MAC indicates the potency, but MAC and potency are always opposite. High MAC, least potent. Low MAC, high potent. Blood gas coefficient means what? It indicates the speed of onset and recovery. Any agent that is having a high blood gas coefficient, it will be slow onset. Low blood gas coefficient, it will be fast in onset. So remember guys, which is, which is the fastest onset? The fastest onset is desflurane. Desflurane, fast onset as well as fast recovery fast onset and fast recovery okay now regarding the inhalational agent we have to remember some inhalational agents important mcq points in the inhalational agent if the mcqs are coming they are mostly coming from this topic of halothane 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 ke bare mein agar kisi ne aap se pooch liya you have to just tell this Halothane, halothane, halothane ke baare mein kisi ne pooch liya to you have to tell 4 heads of halothane. How many heads guys? 4 heads of halothane. Halothane ka sirf a hi yaad rakhenge, 4 heads. What is the first heads of halothane? Heart disease. Halothane is contraindicated in heart disease. Halothane is contraindicated in heart disease. Next, halothane, hyperthermia. What hyperthermia guys? Halothane causes malignant hyperthermia. Halothane causes malignant hyperthermia. Third H of halothane, hepatitis. Halothane causes halothane induced hepatitis. Very good. Halothane causes, like it's having a good amount of metabolism in the liver, which can cause hepatitis. Last is what? Halothane has three maximums. Three maximum. The first maximum is what? Mag it causes maximum bronchodilation. It causes what guys? Maximum bronchodilation. Hence, it can be given as a, it can be given as what? It can be given as an inhalational agent of choice in asthma. Asthma. Second is what guys? Halothane has maximum muscle relaxation. Maximum muscle relaxation. Fourth, third H is third. Third maximum of halothane is what? It is having maximum metabolism in the liver. Maximum metabolism in liver. All these are important MCQ points guys of halothane. Come on. What are the four heads of halothane? Four heads of halothane are what? First H is heart disease. It is contraindicated in heart disease. Second H is what guys? Malignant hyperthermia. Halothane causes malignant hyperthermia. Third H is what? Hepatitis. Halothane can cause damage to the hepatic cells that can lead to halothane induced hepatitis. Last is what? Halothane can produce three maximums. What are the three maximums of halothane? Maximum bronchodilation, maximum muscle relaxation and maximum <coughs> metabolism in the liver. Maximum metabolism in the liver. 
Come on, guys. Can you remember this four heads of halothate? Yes or no? These are very, very, very important, guys. Four heads of halothate are very important. I told you, agar kuch inhalational agents mein kuch pooshenge, to 70% of the questions will be coming from halothin itself. Come on, guys. Is it clear? Right? All clear, doc. Thank you. Next. Isofluorine. Regarding isofluorine, remember, guys, isofluorine is the, isofluorine is the, Commonly used inhalational agent for cardiac surgeries. Commonly used inhalational agent for what surgeries, guys? For cardiac surgeries. Cardiac surgery. Right? But does it mean that it is the best agent? Does it mean that it is the best agent for cardiac surgery? No. The best inhalational agent for cardiac surgery is desflurane. But commonly used inhalational agent for cardiac surgery is isofluorane. Why? Why? Because there is one thing. Desflurane, even though it will be best, desflurane is very costly. Gas itself is not costly. The vaporizer in which desflurane is stored, it is very costly. That's why isofluorane is commonly used. So remember, guys, the commonly used inhalational agent for cardiac surgery is what? It is isofluorine. It is isofluorine. It is the best inhalational agent for neurosurgeries also. Best inhalational agent for what surgeries, guys? Neurosurgeries. Neurosurgery. Neurosurgery. Okay. Next is what? Sivoflurane. Sivoflurane. Now, regarding sivoflurane, one point we, you guys can tell me. Sivoflurane is the, sivoflurane is the, it is an inhalational agent that is used for induction purpose in children. I told you guys, I told you that a person can be made unconscious or a person induction can be done by, induction of the person can be done by IV or inhalational, yes or no? In children, we can go for inhalational induction. In children, if we go for inhalational agent, inhal inhalational induction, the best inhalational induction agent for children is what? Sivo fluorine, sivo yane ke sweet, sweet, sivo, right? It's having a sweet odor having a sweet odor that's why it is used in children it's an inhalational agent of choice for or IV for induction purpose in children so it's having a sweet odor it's used for inhalational induction purpose inhalational induction purpose in children in home guys in children in children okay next but there is one side effect of sevoflurane one side effect of sevoflurane what side effect? Sivoflurane can form a nephrotoxic compound called as compound A or olefin. Sivoflurane can form compound A or olefin, which is a nephrotoxic compound. Compound A or olefin. Okay. When you use sivoflurane with closed circuit or when you use sivoflurane in a container, when you use it with soda line, it will cause this compound called as compound A, which is a nephrotoxic compound. So guys, coming to the last inhalational agent, which is called as desflurane. Not last, last but one, which is called as desflurane. Desflurane ke baare mein aap log ek do points to bolenge yaar. Desflurane ke baare mein ek do points to bolo taake mein aage bar sakun. Come on, tell me some one or two points of desflurane that you know. Desflurane, desflurane. Ek to point ho gaya hai, chalo. Best agent for Cardiac, but not used. Why it is not used for cardiac? Why? Because it's very costly. Good. Okay. Come on. Very good. It's the best agent for cardiac surgeries, but still it's not used commonly. Commonly uses ISO. Why? Because costly. A second kya hai? Remember guys, desflurane, if you guys remember, desflurane, what was the blood gas coefficient of desflurane? 0 0.42, 0 0.42, 0 0.42, yani ke it is having a low blood gas coefficient, means what? It will be having rapid onset and rapid recovery, rapid onset and rapid recovery. Can I use desflurane, can I use desflurane for daycare surgery guys? Yes or no? Daycare surgery? 
रिमेम्बर इनहले IV induction agent of choice for decade surgery is propofol. After giving propofol, if I if after giving propofol, I have to maintain him in an unconscious state by using inhalational. But the best inhalational agent used for decay surgery is what, guys? It is desflurane. It is what, guys? Desflurane. Desflurane. So decay surgery, you have to use desflurane. Desflurane. So point four two is the blood gas coefficient of desflurane. It's having rapid onset and rapid recovery. It can be used for decay surgery and best agent for cardiac surgery. Best agent for cardiac surgery. Cardiac surgery. Coming to the last inhalational agent, which is called as nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide. Come on, guys. Nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide. What is nitrous oxide? Ke mein kya yaad ke bhi nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide में को तो एक ही चीज़ याद आ रही है nitrous oxide यानी कि max value of nitrous is 105, 105 यानी कि 105 so it is having high max so it will be least potent so it it will be used as a carrier gas ये तो याद हो गया इसके अलावा क्या nitrous का और एक point क्या याद रखेंगे nitrous oxide you can't give remember nitrous is contraindicated in in what in closed loop surgeries in closed loop surgeries closed loop surgeries could be what tympanic membrane surgeries why because nitrous expands the air containing cavity ye jahan par bhi jayega expand karega closed loop or air containing cavity so nitrous expands the air cavities that's why nitrous should be contraindicated in what tympanic membrane surgery nitrous is also contraindicated in what right Apart from that, nitrous is also contraindicated in pregnancy. 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 Okay. Right. Yeah, nitrous is, is having a good analgesic property, but it's not the best analgesic. The best analgesic among the inhalational agent is trilene. Okay. So remember, nitrous ke mein kya hai rakhenge? the points that we can remember of nitrous is it's a carrier gas. Second is contraindications. Contraindicated in closed loop surgeries such as tympanic membrane surgeries. Apart from that, in pregnancy also, nitrous expands the air containing cavities. Okay, this was regarding what, guys? This was regarding the inhalational agents. Inhalational agents, guys. Remember, general anesthesia is divided into four phases. Pehla phase flight ka runway pe jo tha pre oxygenation phase. General anesthesia ka bhi pehla phase pre oxygenation. The second phase of the flight, induction of the takeoff phase, right? Third phase of general anesthesia, the maintenance phase, and the fourth phase of general anesthesia is the reversal or recovery phase. Reversal or recovery phase. Hum kya padne? General anesthesia, you give a mixture of drug or combination of drug. We are using IV agents, inhalational agents, and muscle relaxants. In IV agents, there are four IV agents. What are the four IV agents, guys? Propofol, lithomerate, thiopentone, ketamine. So guys, remember whenever anyone is asking you about what thiopentone, thiopentone, sodium thiopentone, what should you what what should come to your mind? Sodium thiopentone, yellow amorphous powder systems आ जाना आपके mind में कौन से systems? Sodium thiopentone is what best friend of CNS, enemy of others. Best friend of CNS, enemy of others. Next next is what propofol. Propofol के बारे में क्या याद रखेंगे guys? कितनी देर चलेगी और लाइक फोर्टी फाइव मिनट विल फिनिश गाइस ठीक है बोर हो गए हो क्या भाई बोर तो नहीं हो रहे हो राइट प्रोपोफॉल ओके 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 राइट 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 प्रोपोफॉल क्या के बारे में क्या याद रखेंगे आईवी इंडक्शन एजेंट ऑफ चॉइस इन वॉट वॉट सिक्स कंडीशन खाना बनाना है ओके ओके Propofol, IV induction agent of choice in six conditions. Decade surgery, TIVA, LMA insertion. Come on, LMA insertion. Or those shoot rahe mujhse. It is a having anti-emetic property, anti-pruritic property, and neurosurgery. Neurosurgery. Okay. Right, right, right. Next, ketamine. Bola to ketamine is an opposite of thiopentone. Boy, yaad rakhenge. Ketamine is an opposite of thiopentone. Now, guys, just look over here. This slide is basically the revision of what we have discussed. This slide is very 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 important. ठीक है? Exam से एक दिन पहले ये कैसा भी general anesthesia का ये कैसा भी ये slide पढ़ के जाना है आपको. Okay? Just look over here, guys. 
if a person is suffering with heart disease what is what is the iv induction agent i have to give samjho ek patient hai heart disease se suffer ho raha hai hum usko general anesthesia denge so general anesthesia mein aap iv induction doge aap muscle relaxant doge aap inhalational agent doge yes or no my question is what is the iv induction agent that you given heart disease come on guys tell me i'll write it very good very good very good very good guys ethomidate very good ethomidate i'll write the short form guys ethomidate okay so ethomidate maine de diya patient ho gaya behosh ab kya karna hai mereko usko dena hai muscle relaxant the muscle relaxant of choice in heart disease everyone look over here the muscle relaxant of choice in heart disease the muscle that is commonly given in heart disease patient is that muscle relaxant also looks like a heart v se start hoga heart ke jaisa lagega that is called as vecuronium muscle relaxant that is given in heart disease patient is what guys vecuronium v se start hoga vecuronium usko aisa dal do look it looks like a heart theek hai even though my uh, my drawing is very bad but you can remember vecuronium is a muscle relaxant of choice in heart disease patient inhalational agent in heart disease i'll write there best agent and commonly used agent come on guys you guys tell me which is the best inhalational agent which is the best inhalational agent for heart disease very good the best is desflurane lekin paise nahi hai sab पैसे नहीं है डेस्फ्लोरेन खरीदने के लिए नहीं डेस्फ्लोरेन का वेपराइजर खरीदने के लिए पैसे नहीं है तो कॉमनली क्या यूज करेंगे आइसोफ्लोरेन आइसोफ्लोरेन ठीक है एवरीवन गॉट इट आईवी इंडक्शन क्या दोगे पेशेंट को हार्ट डिजीज हो गया तो इकॉमिडेट वेक्टोरियम एज अजर रिलैक्शन इनलेशनल एजेंट बेस्ट इज डेस्ट एंड कॉमनली इज यूज आइसोफ्लोरेन डन डन नेक्स्ट पेशेंट इज सफरिंग विद ब्रॉन्कियल आस्तमा Patient suffers from bronchial asthma, which is the IV induction agent of choice in bronchial asthma. Asthma, यानी कि respiratory system, respiratory system का friend देना पड़ेगा हमें asthma में. Friend एक ही है respiratory system का friend यानी कि come on guys, I'm talking about what? Which is the IV induction agent? Very good. Ketamine. Ketamine is the IV induction agent of choice in asthma. Muscle relaxant, any muscle relaxant could be given. Any muscle relaxant is given okay and which is the inhalational agent which is the inhalational agent of choice in asthma come on guys inhalational agent of choice in asthma if anyone is asking me i will just tell what inhalational agent of choice in asthma yani ke 4h of halothen halothen has maximum bronchodilation bronchodilation yes or no so halothen तो रिमेंबर गाइज आस्तमा पेशेंट को आई विल गिव आई वी इंडक्शन एस कीटामिन आफ्टर गिविंग आई वी इंडक्शन आई कैन गिव एनी मजर रिलैक्सेंट देन आई विल गिव हालोथेन देन आई विल गिव हालोथेन फॉर मेंटेनिंग हिज अनकॉन्शियसनेस राइट तो रिमेंबर इनलेशनल एजेंट ऑफ चॉइस एन आस्तमा इज हालोथेन नेक्स्ट गाइज शॉक फॉर शॉक वॉट इज आई वी इंडक्शन एजेंट ऑफ चॉइस कमॉन गाइज शॉक शॉक यानी कि कौन सा सिस्टम आ रहा है कार्डियोवास्कुलर कार्डियोवास्कुलर का बेस्ट फ्रेंड कौन है कार्डियोवास्कुलर सिस्टम का बेस्ट फ्रेंड कौन है कमॉन गाइस कीटामिन राइट कीटामिन इज आईवी इंडक्शन एजेंट ऑफ चॉइस इन शॉक कीटामिन इज आईवी इंडक्शन एजेंट ऑफ चॉइस इन शॉक व्हिच इज द मसल रिलैक्सेंट ऑफ चॉइस इन शॉक द मसल रिलैक्सेंट ऑफ चॉइस इन शॉक इज पैनक्यूरोनियम इट इज पैनक्यूरोनियम 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 के पैनक्यूरोनियम Which is the inhalational agent of choice in shock? Same like heart disease, guys. Best is and most commonly. Come on, guys. Which is the best one? Which is the best for heart disease? Desflurane. Most commonly, isoflurane. Isoflurane. Next is daycare surgery. Daycare surgery. Come on, guys. Daycare surgery. Daycare surgery. Me, if there is a patient coming to you, which is the best IV induction agent of choice for daycare surgery? Come on, best IV IV induction agent of choice for daycare IV. Propofol, very good. Propofol, muscle relaxant of choice for daycare surgery. Muscle relaxant of choice. Remember, you have to give a shortest acting non-depolarizing, which is Meva Curium. 
Meva curium is the shortest acting non depolarizing which can be used for decay surgery. Inhalational agent for decay surgery. One. Inhalational agent of choice for decay surgery. Bolo up, maya likunga. Tess fluorine. Tess fluorine. Tess fluorine. Okay. Next is neurosurgery. For neurosurgery, what is the best? IV induction, muscle relaxant, and inhalation. For neurosurgery, the best IV induction agent is propofol. Propofol. Second best is. Thiopentone. Second best is what guys? Thiopentone. Sodium thiopentone. Okay. Next. Any muscle relaxant could be given in neurosurgery. The best inhalational agent of choice for neurosurgery we have already discussed which is isoflurane. Isoflurane. Right. This is your summary of IV muscle relaxant and inhalational. Summary of IV muscle relaxant and inhalational agent. Very, very, very important guys. Right. So, this is regarding the IV induction agent, muscle relaxant and inhalational agent summary. Is this thing clear? Yes or no? Is it clear guys? Yes? Come on guys. Is this thing clear? Right. That slide you have to you have to study that slide just before going like exam say din pehle just take revision ke liye just for the revision okay guys sure so now coming to what all clear okay guys next coming to what regional anesthesia and local anesthesia regional and local anesthesia okay so guys you know what is local anesthesia local anesthesia means what you are giving on a surface a small surface is being anesthetized that is called as a local anesthesia local anesthesia now. In this local anesthesia, you have to remember local anesthesia, we are using the drugs which are called as local anesthetic drugs. Local anesthetic drugs. What are local anesthetic drugs? These are the drugs that can be given in local anesthesia, spinal anesthesia, epidural anesthesia as well as nerve blocks. Okay. In local anesthesia, we are having what? Local anesthetics. Local anesthetics are the drugs that can be given in local anesthesia, spinal anesthesia, Epidural anesthesia and nerve blocks, right? So, we are dividing this regional anesthesia in re regional. Remember, guys, regional anesthesia is different, local anesthesia is different. Okay. First, we will discuss about what local anesthesia. In local anesthesia, you can give local anesthetics. But what are local anesthetic drugs? What are local anesthetic drugs? Local anesthetic drugs are the drugs that can be given in local, spinal, epidural, and nerve blocks. Now, in local anesthetic drugs, there are two categories. Two categories. One category of local anesthetic is called as amino esters. Other category of local anesthetic is called as what? Amino amides. Local anesthetics are divided into two categories. One category is called as amino esters. Other is amino amides. Easy way to remember an amino ester. Just look over here, guys. Amino ester. See the term amino ester and tell me in amino ester, how many eyes are there? In the spelling of amino ester, how many eyes are there? Only one eye. Whereas in amino amides, how many eyes are there? How many eyes are there in amino amides? Two eyes. Two eyes. This is very important, guys. There have been questions asking you about which is an amino ester and which is an amino amide. Okay? So amino ester drugs are both drugs that are just one eye. Just like an example of amino ester is cocaine, procaine, tetracaine, benzocaine, benzocaine, chlorprocaine, chlorprocaine. So remember one eye. Amino ester me hoga one eye. Whereas in amino amides they are two eyes. Amino amides me konse do eyes. Examples of amino amides the commonly tested amino amide is what guys? Lignocaine. Lignocaine is the most commonly used. Lignocaine ke alawa kya hai? Prilocaine. 
लिग्नोकेन प्राइलोकेन ब्यूपी वकेन मैपी वकेन एंड ऑल ठीक है सो वी वी लाइक ये सब नाम याद रखने की जरूरत नहीं है बट जस्ट रिमेंबर द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट वन एंड ऑल जस्ट रिमेंबर अमाइनो अमाइट्स को आपको याद रखना है तो अमाइनो अमाइट्स वो ड्रग है जिनमें दो आईज होंगे अमाइनो एस्टर्स विल हैव ओनली वन आई अमाइनो एस्टर्स विल हैव ओनली वन आई ओके सो अमाइनो एस्टर्स आर देयर एंड अमाइनो अमाइट्स आर देयर नाउ व्हाट वी नीड टू रिमेंबर इज व्हिच इज द लॉन्गेस्ट एंड व्हिच इज द शॉर्टेस्ट एक्टिंग व्हिच इज द लॉन्गेस्ट एक्टिंग अमाइनो व्हिच इज द लॉन्गेस्ट एक्टिंग लोकल एनेस्थेटिक एंड शॉर्टेस्ट एक्टिंग सो एवरीवन लुक ओवर हियर लुक ओवर हियर राइट आई एम जस्ट राइटिंग longest to shortest acting local anesthetic shortest acting local anesthetic right so there is a mnemonic to remember the longest to shortest acting local anesthetic the mnemonic is delhi to bombay loves pc Delhi to Bombay loves PC. Come on, guys. What is PC? What is this PC? PC stands for what? PC stands for. It's not Priyanka Chopra. It is Prem Chopra, or it can be any anyone. Okay. So just look over here. Delhi to Bombay loves PC. In that. In that. D stands for what? D stands for dibucaine. Dibucaine is the longest acting local anesthetic. Longest to shortest. Okay. T stands for what? Tetracaine. T stands for tetracaine. B stands for what? Bombay. B stands for bupivacaine. Bupivacaine. Okay. Loves. L stands for lignocaine. P stands for what? Procaine and last C stands for what, guys? Chlor procaine. Chlor procaine. The longest acting is what? Dibucaine. The shortest acting is what, guys? Chlor procaine. The most commonly used local anesthetic worldwide it is lignocaine. The most commonly used local anesthetic worldwide it is lignocaine. Right? The most commonly used local anesthetic. In spinal anesthesia, in what anesthesia, guys? Spinal anesthesia, it is bupivacaine. The most cardiotoxic, it is again bupivacaine. Most cardiotoxic, this is again bupivacaine. Very, very important. Very, very important. So remember, guys, we are we are we are discussing about what the longest to shortest acting local. Anesthesia. Longest to shortest acting local. Anesthesia. The longest local anesthetic is what? Ibuprofen. Shortest is chlorprocaine, which is the most commonly used worldwide. The most commonly used worldwide is lignocaine. Second most commonly used, bupivacaine. Remember, bupivacaine is most commonly used in what anesthesia? Spinal anesthesia. Spinal anesthesia. Is this thing clear, guys? Yes or no? Longest. This is the shortest. Okay. Right. So remember, these are what? These are the drugs. लोकल एनेस्थेटिक्स आर द ड्रग्स इसका मतलब यह नहीं है कि लोकल एनेस्थेटिक्स खाली लोकल एनेस्थीजिया में देंगे नो लोकल एनेस्थेटिक्स आर द ड्रग्स दैट आर गिवन इन लोकल स्पाइनल पीडियोरल एंड नर्व ब्लॉक्स लोकल स्पाइनल एपीडियोरल एंड नर्व ब्लॉक्स ओके राइट नाउ वी आर कमिंग टू व्हाट वी आर कमिंग टू दिस टॉपिक ऑफ सेंट्रल न्यूरोएक्सियल ब्लॉकेज सेंट्रल न्यूरोएक्सियल ब्लॉक सेंट्रल न्यूरोएक्सियल ब्लॉकेज कंसिस्ट ऑफ स्पाइनल एनेस्थीजिया एंड epidural anesthesia spinal and what anesthesia guys epidural right central neuroaxial block is a part of regional anesthesia it's a part of regional anesthesia it consists of spinal and epidural come on guys spinal anesthesia uh, uh, today at the, uh, at the start of a class i told you spinal anesthesia is given for what surgeries feeling chest pain and breathing problem is it the reason on anxiety if then what to do just calm down calm down for some time okay so guys uh, i'm talking about what i'm talking about spinal anesthesia spinal anesthesia is given for what surgeries 
final anesthesia is given for the surgeries which are done below the level of umbilicus within 2 to 3 hours of duration that could be hysterectomy that could be lscs that could be testicular surgeries that could be diabetic foot surgeries no one is bothering to ask you about the indication the main points of spinal anesthesia is what spinal anesthesia when you give it what is the space where you are giving the, where you are introducing the needle the, the space where you introduce the needle is what guys come on most commonly we choose most commonly used space is L4 L5 space L4 L5 space how will you identify the L4 L5 space this space is identified by Tuffier's line Tuffier line Tuffier's line is what guys just look over here you go at the back of the patient keep your hands on the iliac crust highest point of the iliac crust make your thumbs like this make your thumbs like this if your thumbs are corresponding after keeping the hand, if the thumbs are corresponding, that corresponding line is called as Tuffier's line. It basically corresponds to the L4, L5 space. The most commonly chosen space is L4, L5. The second most common is what guys? It is L3, L4 space. L3, L4 space. Okay? So that is the space that we, that we choose in spinal anesthesia. And remember guys, spinal anesthesia is a Single shot technique. It's a single shot technique. Single shot technique means what? Once you give the local anesthetic drug into the CSF, into the, into the cerebrospinal fluid, then the patient will be having numbness or patient will be having that effect for 2 to 3 hours. It cannot be, you cannot repeat and give one, one more dose of spinal. It's a single shot technique. Single shot technique. Apart from that, what else you need to remember is, in spinal anesthesia, when you are giving, when you are introducing the needle, what are the layers pierced by your needle? Very, very important. Layers pierced by your needle. Come on guys, layers pierced by your needle in spinal. What are the layers pierced by your needle? In spinal anesthesia, what are the layers pierced guys? The first layer to be pierced in spinal is what? It is the skin. After skin, subcutaneous tissue. After subcutaneous tissue, the supraspinous ligament, the supraspinous ligament. Next, the interspinous ligament, interspinous ligament. Next, ligamentum flavum, ligamentum flavum, ligamentum flavum. Okay. Next, after ligamentum flavum is what? Dura. Once you puncture the dura, right? Once you puncture the dura, then they will be what? Arachnoid. Arachnoid. And once you puncture the arachnoid, you will be in the subarachnoid space. Subarachnoid space that has CSF. Subarachnoid space that has what? That has CSF. Is it clear? So remember guys. The first, the, the first layer to be pierced is skin, then subcutaneous tissue, then supraspinous ligament, then interspinous ligament, then ligamentum flavum, then dura, then arachnoid and the subarachnoid space where you see the CSF. Now guys, look over here. On piercing of one structure, you will basically feel that your needle has suddenly passed. You will feel that there is some loss of resistance. One structure is hai jo very tough. Hota hai. There is one structure which is very tough. In the in the structure, one structure is very tough. Once you pierce that structure, you will feel what loss of resistance or a pop of sound or a snap sound. Snap kind of feeling you will get. Sorry, what is that structure, guys? That is ligamentum flavum. The toughest ligament is what? Ligamentum flavum. The toughest ligament is what? Ligamentum flavum. A snap can be felt. Snap is felt when it is being pierced. Toughest ligament is ligamentum flavum. Ligamentum flavor. And the last layer to be pierced in spinal is what? What is the last layer to be pierced, guys? The last layer to be pierced is arachnoid. The last layer to be pierced in spinal is arachnoid. Arachnoid. Is this thing clear? Right? So remember the toughest ligament is ligamentum flavum. So now guys. Remember, after giving spinal anesthesia, what are the complications the patient might encounter? 
you guys know the space you guys know what are the structures that are being pierced remember after giving spinal the common complication that the patient encounters is what the common complication is what it is hypotension the most common complication of spinal it's not central neuroaxial block this right there the most common complication of spinal anesthesia is hypotension the most common complication is hypotension immediately after giving spinal anesthesia the patient's blood pressure will fall drastically that is called as hypotension hypotension right that can be easily managed how can you can easily manage this hypotension can be easily managed by giving a treatment for hypotension is what what is the best drug that could be given for management of hypotension in spinal it is phenylephrine it is phenyl ephrine phenylephrine phenylephrine okay for treatment of hypotension it is phenyl ephrine so remember the most common complication is hypotension next mcq regarding spinal is what is the most common post op complication post op complication means what after surgery when you go towards the patient and you ask the patient that complication you can see what is that complication urinary retention the most common post op complication of spinal anesthesia is what guys urinary retention urinary retention due to blockage of the sacral fibers or sacral segment the patient will have urinary retention urinary retention guys some of you are writing headache just look over here guys nowadays headache is not seen as a complication of spinal you know what's the reason nowadays we are using thin bore dura separating needle you know the reason for headache to develop in spinal is what due to the damage of dura aajkal hum log needle hi aisa use kar rahe hain which is causing less damage to dura what is the needle that we using thin bore dura separating that's why headache is not at all seen nowadays right so remember guys the most common complication of spinal is what hypotension whereas the most common post op complication of spinal is what guys urinary retention urinary retention right two hoys needle is not used for spinal two hoys will come i'll come to it two hoys needle is used for epidural while discussing epidural i'll come to it okay next other complications of spinal include what patient might have total spinal anesthesia high spinal high spinal is characterized by hypotension and bradycardia high spinal mein kya hoga hypotension bradycardia high, high spinal means what when your drug has ascended upward when the achieved level of block is more than the desired level that is called as high spinal you have to remember what high spinal mein kya dekhne ko milega high spinal mein you will see hypotension and bradycardia apart from that patient will go into shock patient will develop pdph what is pdph guys pdph is what post dural puncture headache puncture headache abhi jo jo headache likh rahe the na yahan pe dekh lo headache is a rare you know the reason why headache is rare why because we are using what needle the needle commonly used in spinal most commonly used needle in spinal anesthesia is what guys it is thin bore dura separating needle thin bore dura separating needle thin bore dura separating needle is this thing clear right this was regarding what spinal anesthesia epidural means what guys what is epidural epidural yani ke name is saying some anesthesia which is given outside the dura outside the dura okay epidural indication you guys know epidural is indicated for the surgeries done below the level of umbilicus for a long duration for any longer duration surgeries you can go for epidural longer duration surgeries you can go for epidural now in this epidural anesthesia just look over here the needle that you use in epidural anesthesia this is this needle what is this needle called as this needle is called as two hoys needle this is need this needle is called as what needle guys two hoys needle by looking at the needle you can ident you should identify this is epidural needle epidural needle will have 1 cm of remember two hoys needle will have what guys 1 cm of dark and light bands dark and light bands the length of this needle is how much the length of this needle is 9 to 10 cm the length of this epidural needle is 9 to 10 cm through this needle you put a epidural catheter through this needle you put a epidural catheter 
right epidural catheter is put okay so you need to remember guys this is two hoist needle a thick bore needle that is used for what anesthesia epidural anesthesia epidural anesthesia okay now so remember guys in central neuroaxial blockade spinal is there epidural is there spinal anesthesia spinal anesthesia the most commonly chosen space is l4 l5 space how will you identify by tuffier's line next is what in spinal anesthesia what's the most common complication after giving spinal when you check the patient's blood pressure patient will have what hypotension hypotension what is the most common post op complication of spinal it is urinary retention post op post op complication is what urinary retention okay now next is what next coming to equipment and machine equipment and machine as it's a rapid review guys i'm just focusing on the points which are very very important okay right very very important okay if it was a longer session or if if, if it was total anesthesia topic session then we would have done in two days i would have given you the examples and elaborations okay hope this is help uh, like helping you guys we'll come to this topic of equipment machine is it fine guys is my speed fine or am i going to speed i think you will be having an access on the youtube right fine okay okay coming to what guys equipment and machine equipment and machine so guys in equipment and machine we have to discuss about what we have to discuss about this thing what is this thing that is being available on your screen guys what is this thing perfect speed thank you thank you thank you guys okay right this look over here what is this equipment this is the equipment that is used to used for intubation purpose what is this this is laryngoscope this is what guys this is laryngoscope laryngoscope which laryngoscope is it guys which is this laryngoscope now in this laryngoscope you are having two blades this is the curved blade laryngoscope which is called as macintosh laryngoscope macintosh laryngoscope other will be a straight blade laryngoscope which is called as miller's laryngoscope miller's laryngoscope is commonly used in children why because children they have a large epiglottis children they have a large epiglottis isme millers is used millers is used in children why because they have a large epiglottis whereas macintosh is used in adults macintosh is used in adults macintosh is used in adults okay guys can anyone tell me which is the shortest acting muscle relaxant and which is the longest acting muscle relaxant shortest acting non depolarizing muscle relaxant sorry i will be specific shortest acting non depolarizing muscle relaxant non depolarizing my short cat has long tail sorry my short dog has long tail meva curium shortest acting longest is what guys longest is longest acting non depolarizing dog sack dogs okay guys in the iv induction agent which iv induction agent is the best friend of cns and enemy of other systems best friend of cns and enemy of other systems bolo bhai best friend of cns enemy of other system thiopentone very good thiopentone sodium thiopentone and what is the opposite of sodium thiopentone ketamine opposite of sodium thiopentone is ketamine okay so anyways we are discussing about what we are discussing about the equipments and machine so in the equipment and machine we are having curved blade and straight blade right these are the curved blade and straight blade laryngoscope next is what endotracheal tubes in endotracheal tubes just look over here guys there are two types of endotracheal tube this was the previously used endotracheal tubes also called as red rubber tubes red rubber tubes right these are not used nowadays why because this red rubber tubes if you just focus on this point just look over here and focus on this point you will see that this red rubber tubes they were having what they were having a high pressure and low volume 
they were producing high pressure and low volume due to the high pressure of the cuff due to the high pressure of the cuff it's not police catheter guys it's a red rubber tube it's an endotracheal tube okay red rubber tube so just look over here this was high pressure and low volume as this was causing some problem in the trachea pressure problems in the trachea that's why these are not at all used nowadays the tubes that we are commonly using is what the tubes made up of pvc what is pvc polyvinyl chloride poly vinyl chloride right there are two types of pvc tube one tube is called as cuffed tube other tube is called as uncuffed tube uncuffed tube right so remember guys remember red rubber tubes were having high pressure low volume pvc tubes have what low pressure high volume low pressure high volume high volume right low pressure high volume low pressure high volume okay next in the pvc there are two types i told you cuffed and uncuffed cuffed is used in adults very good whereas uncuffed is used in home guys uncuffed is used in children uncuffed is used in children why because the tracheal diameter of the children is very small you can just put the tube and they, it, it doesn't require any cuff whereas for adults the tracheal diameter is large you require a tube that is having a cuff okay so that is pvc tube now there are some parts of the pvc tube that you have to remember what are the parts that of the pvc tube that you have to remember is just look over here this is the tube that you see right if we zoom into this tube one opening is there on this part other opening of the pvc tube you will see one more opening on the lateral side the lateral side opening in the pvc tube is called as what is called as murphy's eye murphy's eye why is murphy's eye given guys what is the need of giving murphy's eye over here if at all just look, look over here the importance of murphy's eye is what if the tube if the main opening gets blocked if the main opening if this opening gets blocked patient can be ventilated through the murphy's eye if the main opening is blocked then the patient then the patient can be ventilated via murphy's eye ventilated via murphy's eye murphy's eye okay this is murphy's eye next you see some two black markings there are two black markings okay on the endotracheal tube now my next question is basically just look over here guys imagine this is the trachea trachea bifurcates into what right bronchus and left bronchus okay right and left bronchus whenever you are putting the endotracheal tube you should place the endotracheal tube on the carina this bifurcation of the trachea is called as carina whenever you put the endotracheal tube you have to put it on the carina or you have to put it 3 to 4 cm above the carina remember whenever you are putting an endotracheal tube it should always be placed how much 3 to 4 cm above the carina why 3 to 4 cm why because if you put it on the carina the patient cannot be ventilated adequately if you put it 3 to 4 cm above it both the lungs can be ventilated adequately 3 to 4 cm above the carina whenever you are placing an endotracheal tube place it how much 3 to 4 cm above the carina right next what is this tube that is being shown over here this is also a form of endotracheal tube just look over here this form of endotracheal tube you can easily you can easily bend it or you can easily mold it right but it won't get blocked this is called as plexometallic or armor tube usually used for neurosurgeries neurosurgeries or remember guys remember these are this 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 tube is commonly used for the used for the surgeries done in prone position if surgery is done in prone position you use this tube called as plexometallic or armor tube for neurosurgeries or for surgeries done in what position guys prone position prone position you use this tube called as plexometallic or armor tube neurosurgery or surgery requiring patient to be in a prone position okay next is what this one what is this structure that is being 
available on your screen. This is called as LMA, laryngeal mask airway, laryngeal mask airway. Now guys, regarding laryngeal mask airway, first of all, LMA is a, first of all, first question that could come is, is LMA a definitive airway? Is it a definitive airway? Yes or no? Definitive airway. Remember guys, definitive airway means what? An airway that is basically kept inside the trachea that is just ventilating only the lungs and that is preventing aspiration also. That is a definitive airway. LMA is not a definitive airway. Why? Because LMA doesn't fit in the trachea. LMA fits where? LMA fits in the supraglottic area. It fits in the supraglottic area. That's why LMA is also called as supraglottic airway device. Supraglottic airway device. So, is it a definitive airway? No. LMA is never a definitive airway. It's not a definitive airway. Then LMA is used for what surgery? LMA is used for minor surgeries or LMA can be used if you fail intubation. If you fail to intubate, if you fail to intubate, if you have not, you are not able to intubate the person, you can just put an LMA, right? By the time you do tracheostomy, LMA should be there so that you have to ventilate the patient. So remember guys, for minor surgery, you use LMA. For fail, if you have failed to intubate, then you can use laryngeal mask airway. Laryngeal mask airway. There are some contraindications of LMA. What are the contraindications guys? If the person is having blood in the oral cavity, if the person is having what guys? Blood in oral cavity, LMA is contraindicated. Apart from that, if the person is having oral cancer, oral cancer, LMA is contraindicated. Why? Because if there is blood in oral cavity or cancer, you cannot put an LMA. Why? Because if you put an LMA, they are pushing the blood inside the trachea. That patient can lead to aspiration of the blood and all. Right? So, you need to remember guys, LMA is contraindicated in two conditions. Blood in the oral cavity and oral cancers. Oral cancers. Okay? So, these are the contraindications of what? Contraindications of LMA. But remember, is LMA a definitive airway? No. So, there were some anesthetists who modified this LMA. Who modified this LMA. What modification they did is, they added one more tube to this LMA. One more tube was added. Just look over here. This one more tube was added to the LMA. Right? This one more tube was added to the LMA. This LMA was called as what LMA? Proceal LMA. Proceal LMA. Or it is also called as a modified LMA. But what is one more lumen that is being added? It is a esophageal lumen. It is a esophageal lumen. Right? Esophageal lumen is being added. Esophageal lumen is being added. This is also called as a proceal LMA or can it lead to pulmonary embolism? No, bhai. Why will it lead to pulmonary embolism? Pulmonary embolism means systemic circulation may air has to enter. How is LMA causing the air to go into the systemic circulation? No. Okay. Right. So, remember esophageal lumen. Through this esophageal lumen, Ryle's tube was put in order to block the esophagus so that the patient doesn't aspirate. But again, this also was not a good, this is also still not a definitive airway. All in all, LMA, whether it is a normal LMA or a proceal modified LMA, it's never a definitive airway. It's not a definitive airway. It's not a definitive airway. Okay. Next. So, LMA is clear. You guys know what is the IV induction agent for LMA insertion? IV induction agent for LMA insertion. Come on, guys. For LMA insertion, what's the IV induction agent? Propofol. Propofol. Guys, remember Propofol. Propofol uses an IV induction agent of choice in many conditions. Okay. Many conditions. Next is what guys? Anesthesia machine. Anesthesia machine. Regarding anesthesia machine, this machine on your screen, this machine is called as what machine guys? This is called as Boyle's machine. This is called as what guys? Boyle's machine. Boyle's machine. Right? Boyle's machine. As it was introduced by a guy called as Edmund Gaskin Boyle in the year 1917. In the year 1917. Introduced by Edmund Gaskin Boyle, it is called as Boyle's machine. We will divide this machine into three systems. 
one system is called as high pressure other is intermediate and uh, last is low pressure just look over here guys we don't have to remember what is there in high intermediate and low what we need to remember is about the parts of the machine parts of the machine just look over here this part of the machine is called as what this is called as cylinder cylinder right apart from cylinder what are the other things this black pipe of the machine is called as what it is called as a breathing circuit breathing circuit right breathing circuit just beside the breathing circuit you see a small button which is called as what emergency oxygen flush emergency o2 flush oxygen flush then this is called as flow meter flow meter right this is called as this is called as what this is called as soda lime chamber soda lime chamber soda lime chamber right this structure is called as vaporizer vaporizer okay so you look over here look over here guys how is the cylinder attached to the machine cylinder is attached to the machine with the help of an assembly cylinder is attached to the machine with the help of an assembly which is called as yoke valve assembly yoke valve assembly okay now guys we have to just discuss about the main points of the structures coming from cylinders cylinders now guys remember cylinders ke bare mein do cheeze yaad rakhenge cylinders all the cylinders are made up of a common material what common material guys most common material used most common material used to make the cylinder is what it is molybdenum it is molybdenum apart from that remember this molybdenum cylinders right so the, the most common material is molybdenum what else we need to remember is this cylinders are given different color coding different color coding different color coding right so that you can just identify the gas by just looking at the color of the cylinder for different gases different color coding is given different gases different color coding is given just look over here guys why why because remember in previous olden days all the gases used to be stored in one one color cylinders only there were many anesthesia related accidents happening when we were telling the patient to bring or when we were telling the the person to bring a oxygen cylinder they were bringing nitrous filled in it and imagine you are giving nitrous thinking that it is oxygen what will happen patient in general anesthesia he is totally dependent on us we have to provide oxygen if we are giving nitrous then oxygenation of the patient will be gone hypoxia right so to prevent all those accidents what we are done is color coding is been given to so that you can identify the gases just by looking at the color of the cylinder so remember guys for oxygen there is a different color coding for nitrous there is different color coding okay oxygen what's the color coding for oxygen you can just look over here guys oxygen remember guys whenever if at all if at all if at all we have a bodyguard if i have a bodyguard with me my bodyguard will be wearing a safari suit yes or no he'll be wearing a black color safari suit on the black color safari suit most of the time in north parts they will be having some white collars white collars yes or no so my bodyguard will wear a black safari suit with white collars but why am i telling you this why because remember for us the bodyguard is oxygen oxygen is a bodyguard oxygen agar bodyguard hai to it will be stored in what color cylinder guys black body and white shoulders black body and white shoulders right nowadays we are having cylinders made up of molybdenum molybdenum is very cheap guys that's why we it's commonly used but nowadays we are making cylinders with aluminum which are mri compatible and all okay so everyone look over here oxygen cylinder what's the color coding guys black body white shoulder black body white shoulder kyu black body white shoulder why because oxygen is am is my bodyguard right nitrous what's the color coding for nitrous cylinder it is complete blue it is complete blue okay complete blue apart from that what else we need to remember air cylinder air cylinder is gray in color carbon dioxide cylinder recently it has been changed to silver color silver color previously we used to store gray uh, like uh, air and carbon dioxide in gray color cylinder only but nowadays carbon dioxide is stored in silver color cylinder silver color 
cylinders. Okay, so oxygen is there, nitrous is there, right? Oxygen we have discussed, nitrous we have discussed, antonox. There is a gas called as antonox. Come on, guys, antonox is what? Antonox is a mixture of 50% of oxygen and 50% of nitrous. 50% of oxygen and 50% of nitrous. That is antonox. What's the color coding for antonox? Blue body, white shoulders. Blue body, white shoulders. Color coding is very important. We have to our body guard. Ke mein yaad hum. Oxygen is black body, white shoulders. Whereas nitrous is complete blue. Antonox. These three gases are very, very important for color coding. For color coding. Okay. Apart from that, what else we need to remember is I told you this cylinders, how are they attached to the machine, guys? This cylinders are attached to the machine with the help of yoke valve assembly. In the yoke valve assembly, there is a system that prevents the wrong attachment of the cylinder. In the yoke valve assembly, there is a system that prevents wrong attachment of the cylinder. What is that system called as? Come on, guys, what is that system called as? That system is called as pin index system. That system is called as what, guys? Pin index system. Pin index system. There have been questions asking you about the pin index system. Just look over here, guys. Pin index system. I won't be telling you the uh, like uh, total explanation, but I will tell you how to remember the pin index system for different gases. Just look over here. Pin index system. Pin index system for air. What is a pin index system? For oxygen, what is a pin index system? For nitrous, what is a pin index system? Right? For antonox, what is a pin index system? Just look over here, guys. Look over here. Air, the pin index system is 1, 5. Oxygen, 2, 5. Nitrous, 3, 5. Antonox, it is 7. Antonox, it is 7. Everyone look over here. Remember, how will you remember this pin index system? Just look over here. Most of the gases, second pin, in, second pin index is phi only. Most of the gases, air, lelo, oxygen, lelo, nitrous, second is phi. You have to remember this one. So remember guys, air I told you, the pin index system for air is 1, 5. Air, air starts with the alphabet A, which is the first alphabet. Yes or no? First alphabet. So it will be 1, 5. 1, 5. Whereas oxygen, what is the pin index system for oxygen? We write O2. So it will be 2, 5. Oxygen, it will be 2, 5. Whereas nitrous, whenever we are writing nitrous, remember phi to sabke liye constant rakhenge hum. Whenever we are writing nitrous, two molecules of nitrogen, one molecule of oxygen. Total kitne molecule hoge? Three. So it will be three. Second wala hamesha phi rahega. And antonox, seven. It's having a unique pin index system. If you can remember, just remember. Antonox ki spelling mein kitne words se? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the pin index system is seven. Is this thing clear guys? Yes or no? This is regarding what? This is regarding the pin index system. The main reason for pin index system is what? Pin index system is used to prevent the wrong attachment of the cylinders. Pin index system is used to prevent the wrong attachment of the cylinders. Wrong attachment of the cylinders. Come on guys. Is this, is this thing clear? Yes or no? Yes or no guys? Come on. Antonox, huh? Antonox is 5. So, Antonox is 7. Antonox is 7. Okay. Okay, right. Next is what, guys? Next, after pin index system, what we need to know is we need to know about the other, other parts. Okay. Intermediate pressure system, it consists of oxygen flush, pipeline assembly. Again, it's not that important. The important things over here is in the intermediate pressure system, sorry, uh, like uh, in the intermediate pressure system, you have this. In the low pressure system, you have vaporizer and breathing circuit. Vaporizer and breathing circuit. Just look over here, guys. Look over here. You don't have to remember high pressure, intermediate and low pressure. You have to remember the parts of the machine. Cylinder. Cylinder is attached to the machine with the help of yoke valve assembly. In the yoke valve assembly. Yes, yes, yes. In the yoke valve assembly, uh, there is a system that prevents wrong attachment that is called as pin index system. That's a system that prevents wrong attachment that is called as pin index system right now next next is breathing circuit breathing circuit so in the low pressure system you are having vaporizer breathing circuit in the breathing circuit what we need to know is 
the gases from the anesthesia machine are going to the patient with the help of the black pipe or a breathing circuit. The black pipe on the machine, you guys remember the black pipe on the machine is a breathing circuit, right? Breathing circuit. Okay, so this breathing circuit, there are many parts, there are many types of breathing circuit. One is called as open breathing circuit, other is called as semi-open, other is called as semi-closed and closed. What we are using, I will tell you that. We are using semi-closed breathing circuit and closed breathing circuit. Semi-closed and closed breathing circuit. Semi-closed and closed breathing circuit. Just look over here guys. Semi-closed breathing circuit. Semi-closed breathing circuit. In semi-closed breathing circuit, what are the breathing circuits? First of all, breathing circuit is what guys? Breathing circuit is a pipe circuit through which you are giving the gases to the patient. Now guys, remember, in the cylinders, the pressure of the oxygen in oxygen cylinder is how much, you know? 2200. In nitrous, how much? 760. Utna pressure we cannot inhale. What is the machine doing? Machine is reducing the pressure of the gas. In the machine, there is a valve called as pressure reducing valve that reduces the pressure. Okay, so now the gases are delivered to the patient with the help of breathing circuit. We are discussing about semi-closed breathing circuit. Semi-closed breathing circuit were first discovered by Mapleson. That's why these breathing circuit are called as Mapleson circuit. Mapleson circuit. Kitne hai Mapleson circuit? What are the different types of Mapleson circuit? Mapleson A is there. Mapleson B is there. Mapleson C is there. Mapleson D is there. E is there and F is there. Mapleson A is also called as Maggle circuit. Just look over here. Mapleson A is also called as Maggle circuit. Maggle circuit. Now guys, remember, in olden days, pehle ke time pe, there were no ventilators. How you used to ventilate? You used to ventilate the patient through spontaneous. Spontaneous ventilation. Spontaneous. So at that time, the first circuit that came at that time was Mapleson A. Mapleson A. That's why Mapleson A is regarded as a circuit of choice for what ventilation, guys? Circuit of choice for spontaneous ventilation. Spontaneous ventilation. Mapleson A is regarded as a circuit of choice for spontaneous ventilation. But this circuit mein thoda sa problem tha, right? Thoda sa problem tha. That problem was rectified by a guy called as Magal. That's why this Mapleson A circuit is also called as what circuit? It is also called as Maggle circuit. It is also called as what circuit, guys? Maggle circuit. Maggle circuit. Okay? Circuit of choice for spontaneous ventilation. B and C, we are not at all using. We are not at all discussing. D circuit. Okay? B, C, Nahid discuss karenge. Coming to Mapleson D circuit. This Mapleson D circuit was introduced in the time where ventilators were available. So, this Mapleson D circuit is regarded as a circuit of choice for what ventilation? Controlled ventilation. What ventilation, guys? Controlled ventilation. Controlled ventilation. Controlled ventilation. Right? Controlled ventilation. And this circuit was also having some problems that was made, modified by a guy called as by a guy called as Bain. Even though I am writing brain, but R is silent. That's why this circuit is also called as Bain circuit. It is also called as Bain circuit. This Mapleson D circuit is a circuit of choice for controlled ventilation. Controlled ventilation. The length of this circuit is 1.8 meters. It is a lengthy circuit. 1.8 meters. M Mapleson E circuit. Coming to the next circuit. Mapleson E. It is an incomplete circuit. It is called as IRS TPs. Incomplete circuit. Right? Then this incomplete circuit was made complete by two guys called as Jackson and Reese. Called as Jackson and Reeves. That's why Mapleson F circuit is also called as Jackson and Reeves circuit. Jackson and Reeves circuit. This is the circuit of choice for controlled as well as spontaneous ventilation in children. Controlled as well as consa ventilation by spontaneous ventilation in whom? In children. Basically, I can say that it is a pediatric circuit of choice. It is a best pediatric circuit. Mapleson F is a best pediatric circuit. Once again, guys, we are discussing about the semi-closed circuit. Semi-closed ko semi-closed kyun bol rahe hain? Why? Because all semi-closed circuit will have an expiratory valve. To that, carbon dioxide is let out. Carbon dioxide is let out. Right? 
So Mapleson A till F A. Mapleson A is the circuit of choice for what ventilation? Spontaneous ventilation. It is also called as Maggle circuit. Then B and C we are not using. Mapleson D circuit is a circuit of choice for what ventilation, guys? Controlled ventilation. It is also called as Bain circuit. Length is 1.8 meters. Last wala F, which is the circuit of choice for pediatric cases, guys. Jackson and Reese. Mapleson F is regarded as the circuit of choice for pediatric cases. Pediatric cases. Coming to the next breathing circuit, which is called as closed circuit. Closed circuit. Everyone look over here. Closed circuit. Just look over here. Closed circuit ko close kyun bol rahe There is no expiratory valve. There is no expiratory valve. The expiratory gases go into this chamber. That expiratory gas, carbon dioxide, mostly the carbon dioxide gets absorbed into this chamber. In closed circuit, there is no expiratory valve that is letting out carbon dioxide. Where is that carbon dioxide going? That carbon dioxide goes into this chamber and gets absorbed. What is this chamber, guys? This chamber is soda lime chamber. This chamber is what, guys? Soda lime chamber. In closed circuit, you are having soda lime chamber. Soda lime chamber. Now, everyone look over here. In closed circuit, the gases are not going into the atmosphere. The gases go into the absorbing chamber called as soda lime and then they get absorb over here regarding soda lime what they can ask is this soda lime is made up of what soda lime is made up of cnsk c stands for calcium hydroxide 94 percent 5 percent sodium hydroxide s stands for silica and k stands for potassium hydroxide 1 percent silica and potassium hydroxide right CNSK, CNSK. What is regarding soda lime that we need to remember is there are some agents that needs to be prevented when you are using soda lime. There are some inhalational agents that needs to be avoided. Inhalational agents avoided with soda lime. Avoided with soda lime. What are the inhalational agents avoided with soda lime, guys? Whenever you are using inhalational agent, remember, guys. CT scan, CT scan, CT scan needs to be avoided, CT scan needs to be avoided. C stands for chloroform, T stands for trilene and S stands for sevoflurane. Whenever you are using inhalational, whenever you are using soda lime, three inhalational agents need to be avoided, right? C stands for chloroform. S se hoga sevoflurane, T se hoga trilene. CT scan needs to be avoided. CT scan is a mnemonic. C T scan. Why? Because sevoflurane, agar aap soda lime ke saath doge to, it is forming a toxic compound called as compound A. Nephrotoxic compound called as compound A or olefin. Okay. So regarding this breathing circuit, is the thing clear, guys? Yes or no? Thank you, Dr. Azam. Right. Next, miscellaneous, right? Miscellaneous topic. Guys, just look over here. What is being performed in this picture? Is breathing circuits clear, guys? Till now, the things which I told you, these are the gunshot points, guys. All good. Okay, right. All good. Now, in this picture, what is being done? Just look over here and tell me what's done in this picture. What's done? This block is called as what? Bayes block. Bayes block. Bayes block. Right? Bayes block. So this Bayes block is also called as IVRA. Intravenous regional anesthesia. Intravenous regional anesthesia. Just look over here, guys. Concentrate on this picture. Just look over here. On in this IVRA, we are putting a tonic wave. Tonic wave means anything that is applying pressure, right? What could be asked in this IVR is what is the pressure of tonic way in the upper limb? The pressure of tonic way in upper limb. Come on, guys. Upper limb, what's the pressure? 50 plus systolic BP. 50 plus systolic BP. Right? And what is the pressure of the tonic way in the lower limb? In lower limb, it is. 
हंड्रेड प्लस सिस्टॉल हंड्रेड प्लस सिस्टॉल इन बीपी हंड्रेड प्लस सिस्टॉल है राइट सो रिमेंबर आई वी आर ए आई वी आर एज टेक्निक दैट इज यूज फॉर लिम्ब सर्जरी इट कुड भी अपर लिम और लोअर लिम्ब सर्जरी फॉर अपर लिम्ब वॉट द प्रेशर गाइज फिफ्टी प्लस सिस्टॉलिक फॉर लोअर लिम्ब वॉट द प्रेशर हंड्रेड प्लस सिस्टॉलिक हंड्रेड प्लस सिस्टॉलिक ओके नेक्स्ट दिस इज रिगार्डिंग वॉट नेक्स्ट पिक्चर इज रिगार्डिंग द कैप्नोग्राफ कैप्नोग्राफ इज अ डिवाइस दैट मेजर्स द एक्ल कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड कैप्नोग्राफ इज अ डिवाइस दैट मेजर्स एक्ल कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड एक्ल सीओ टू दे आर सम कैप्नोग्राफ नॉर्मल कैप्नोग्राफ वैल्यू विल बी लाइक दिस यू विल गेट अ ग्राफ लाइक दिस ओके नाउ वॉट वी नीड टू रिमेंबर इज इफ यू सी अ फ्लैट लाइन फ्लैट लाइन इन कैप्नोग्राफ इंडिकेट्स वॉट फ्लैट लाइन यानी कि रिमेंबर एक्सेल कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड आफ्टर इंट्यूबेटिंग यू कनेक्ट दिस कैप्नोग्राफ टू यू कनेक्ट दिस यू कनेक्ट द एंडोटेकल ट्यूब टू अ कैप्नोग्राफ यू विल गेट दिस काइंड ऑफ ग्राफ इफ यू आर इन साइड द ट्रेकिया बट आफ्टर कनेक्टिंग द कैप्नोग्राफ इफ यू सी अ फ्लैट लाइन वॉट डज इट इंडिकेट इट इंडिकेट्स वॉट यू आर इधर इन द इसोफेगस राइट इसोफेगस रिमेंबर अ फ्लैट कैप्नोग्राफ कुड बी सीन इन वॉट you are you might be in the esophagus or you might be in the trachea and the patient might have what cardiac arrest cardiac arrest so esophageal intubation and cardiac arrest you will see what you will see a flat capnograph flat capnograph there are many capnograph values and many capnograph reading just i am telling you the brief thing about the